Good evening and welcome to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where it's finals night once again at the Modus Super Series. Just three more places to put into the Champions Week Roll of Honour in Series 5 and we're going to see who name number 10 behind that door is going to be at around about 11 o'clock tonight. A fascinating night in Prospect and we're going to be watching all of the action in the company of the asset Paul Nicholson and Macy Ace himself, Chris Mason the Chaps. What a week we've enjoyed. Yeah, it's, it's been fascinating in parts. It was fairly dominant from the gyms so far this week. And uh, yeah, it's up for grabs tonight. I think it's fairly open. I was going to say, we're talking about gym day with Chris Mason, aren't we, once again at the Super Series. But both Long and McEwen were dominant in their respective groups. Yeah, that's fair to say. Uh, Jim Long with a way at a way of victory in Group A. So we haven't seen him for the last couple of days. We'll ask that question once again about how he pulls up on a Saturday because winning Group A is no guarantee, like we saw with Luke Littler last week. But Jim McEwen, really happy for him the last couple of days. I think his dominance of Group B was even better than the dominance of Group A from Jim Long. Yeah, I was, I was waiting for someone to really put down a bit of a marker. After, after Wednesday and after Jim Long's dominance of Group A, I was asked the question, do I think he can win it? Um, and at that time, I thought not, because I expected maybe one or two players from Group B or Group C to really find a, a bit of a higher level. But no one's topped his running average for the week. So he goes in as tonight's favourite, and rightly so. Well, let's wrap the week up and see how we've got to this particular point on Saturday evening. Group A was our focus on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Jim Long on 24 points, and he did so, Paul, by winning four games out of five every single day. Yeah, that's consistent. And I think that word has followed Jim around the first three days of the week. When he spoke to us uh, after Monday, he was talking about how he didn't sleep a great deal after winning a seniors event on the Sunday. But this number that's been hanging around him for the last, what is it, couple of months, 88.41, which is a 17 dart leg, that's his wheelhouse. So six visits is what he does all the time. But as far as what he did over the course of the three days, yes, he was joined on the same points at one point by Dmitry Zhukov, and he was worried by other players like Tingstrom and potentially Lukasiak towards the end, but he was always in control, and that is the most important thing about his week so far. Yeah, and I think he's got the, the perfect type of game for this particular week to be particularly dangerous because, as Paul mentioned, his, his average is around that 88.5 mark, and... That's not just this week. That was last weekend as well, where, where he won a, a seniors tour title. Um, I feared that that kind of level of play may not be enough. But unless someone really does put down a marker early tonight and starts producing some high 90s, we've only had two averages over 100. One from Jim himself, the other from Cam Crabtree, who averaged 105 and didn't make the cut. In terms of Jim, because he's won a tournament recently, how much is that going to stand him instead coming into tonight? Yeah, I'll give him a lot of confidence. You know, it's a, a decent field, a, a good standard on that seniors tour. They're not easy to win. I can, I can vouch mm -hmm. for that. Um, and he, he's got that winning mentality. You know, he won an event Sunday. He's came here. He's done what was asked of him. Won Group A. And uh, he's confident. So that was Group A. Then the players are divvied up into Groups B and C, respectively, with newcomers coming in along the way. This is Group B and how that panned its way out. Jim McEwen, Oscar Lukasiak and Dan Reed making their way through. And Jim McEwen was one game away from making history, becoming the fourth player to win every single match, but also break the legs difference record in Group B. Yeah, and I spoke to him directly after, and he was, he was actually unaware of that and was a little bit annoyed he, he, he didn't know. But uh, he holds the record, Nico, doesn't he, for a Group A or, or a joint record for Group A's, but he would have been on his own in Group B in terms of uh, winning all matches and the legs difference, but ultimately it mattered not. Uh, the impressive one for me was Oscar coming through that group. I, I, I fancied him on what I'd seen, how he performed in the World Cup. Um, Monday... He just took a bit of time to settle, got better Tuesday, much better Wednesday. His, his average for the day on Wednesday puts him right up there with the two gyms and Adam Mould in terms of, of averages, Nico. And if he can reproduce that level of play, he could do what his fellow Swede did in Anton and maybe go under the radar and, and pick up the title tonight. I think it's up for grabs. And we were standing on the stage when Anton Ersland was winning mm. week five. And you saw how happy he was because he was the first Swede to get through to Champions Week. Then he was followed by Andreas Harrison. And if you think about the position 
that Anton was in in Group C after a decent Group A campaign. He went into Group C almost under the radar, but we saw something in him that maybe if he could make Saturday, it would be a great result. He took it one step further, and the expectation of Sweden tonight will be on the shoulders of a very strong 31-year-old Oscar. If he wins tonight, Sweden's going to be bouncing for Champions Week. And this is what this series has taught us, that Sweden and that Scandinavia, we know it's a hotbed, but they're really coming to the fore now. Yeah, and, and so they should. We've been, myself and Paul were, were looking at the history of sort of the, the, the known pros traveling to Sweden. And I think, Paul, it dated back to 73 was the, the first Swedish Open. So they've, they've certainly got a history in the game. And over the years, they've produced a few individuals, but we're starting to see a, a few more come to the front. Yeah, it's good. could well be a third Swedish player in Champions Week tonight if Oscar makes it through. Dan Reed, the other player to make it through Group B. And it was a, a tale of two halves, Paul, wasn't it, as far as his group was concerned? Started well, ended well, middly wants to forget about. I mean, if you think about what Dan's done, 96-plus average in his first performance, and we looked at each other and said, oh, well, where's this guy been the last year and a bit? Because he loves to make a Saturday night. He's, he's got a pretty good hit rate in doing that but he's played in a lot of groups here in Portsmouth. I, th I believe he's played in the same amount of series as Robert Thornton, mm -hmm. so that just goes to show how highly he's regarded by the Motor Super Series. But now we have to put pressure on him. We can't allow him to continually come here without success. He's got to kick on and get this weekly title. Or the, if he's going to be considered amongst some of the, the better players that have won titles and series. Well, let's have a look and see how Group C finished up. That was our action in the afternoon sessions on Thursday and Friday, respectively. And this was drama from the first start to the last. And I remember we were on the balcony at 3 o'clock on Friday thinking Cam Crabtree has put himself in a really strong position. We thought maybe just a solitary win would be enough for him to go through. But in the end, lost that final game of the session and got eliminated. Yeah, he slipped up, but it went all the way to the, well, the last start of, the, of that session where... Uh, Tommy had to, had to win. He faced three match starts against Rennie, which would have put Cam Crabtree through. Um, as it was, yeah, that was, a, that was a shock. He was one that was most definitely on our shortlist this week, Cam Crabtree. Uh, but ultimately paid the price for a, 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 just a couple of sloppy matches and, and, and one particular match that we, at the time we, we picked out and said he may regret losing that one 4-3. And ultimately, it, it, that's what cost him. And in terms of the two players that went through, Tommy Morris and Adam Mould, two players who've been here a few times now at the Super Series and are really steady campaigners. Yeah, obviously Adam's won a week before. It was the very start of 2023. You were talking to him yesterday about trying to bookend the year with a, a win in this season as well, which is now autumn because it's a bit chilly. <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, I think Adam being the ADC ranked number one player by some distance... That does carry a bit of weight. He wanted that ranking, he's got it, but now he'd like a second weekly title to have a crack at another Champions Week. But as far as Tommy's concerned, he has passion, drive, and he's busy as well. On the stage tonight in front of these fans, he's going to light up, and that might just play in his hands. I don't think we've seen anywhere close to what he can do, because I think he scrapped at times in Group C, but just got here. But what is the job the first five days of the week? get here then it's a different beast on a saturday yeah and that that energy might be just enough and and i, and I like what nico said there he is busy he's mm -hmm. he's always darting about you never know quite know what you're going to get from him but what you will get is, is passion and energy uh, and that desire to win he is desperate to to win one of these and desperate to qualify for champions week uh, and like i said i think it's i think it's wide open i can see why the bookies have gone the way they have in terms of how they've priced it up tonight, but um, I said it when Anton qualified. I thought it was wide open. I'm going to say the same tonight. So those are the five days of qualification that took us to this particular point. So into Saturday night's final, we got our Super 6, and the players will be split up into two pools of three. The two players at the top of the group after two rounds of matches will make their way through to the semi-finals, where it will be straight knockout all the way to the £5,000 jackpot. These are the two groups that are in play this year. I'll give you both a group each. We'll begin with you, Mason, your assessment of Group 1. Yeah, I think, I think all the players would be fairly happy with that. Um, Oscar's had a, a, a day where he's averaged close to what Jim averaged in qualification. Um, Tommy, 
we didn't see the best of him. He may be just keeping it all back in the locker mm -hmm. for tonight, but we know he's going to have to pick his game up uh, certainly a couple of levels from how he, pr uh, how he played to qualify. Uh, and Jim Long's the, the one at the top. He's the, he's the bookie's favourite for a reason. He's rock solid. I've said it. He's, he is one paced, but that, that's not, um, you know, I'm bit not being critical of that. That's a, that's a great quality to have. As far as Group 2 is concerned, Paul, Adam, Jim and, and Dan in there, what would be your assessment of that? Jim go off as favourite? Yeah, I think that's fair, considering what he's done here. And, and I think we take into consideration what he's done in this format in a different venue as well. He's got multiple successes. And I think you've got to say that Dan Reed is up against it. I think he's the one who can potentially say, well, they're expected to go through. I can play with a little less pressure but he's going to put pressure on himself because we've talked the last couple of nights about him being emotionally invested. If he can somehow relax a little bit more tonight, he will be more dangerous. But I look at Adam and I look at Jim because they're the only two weekly champions from tonight playing in the same group. They will be expected to qualify. And at this point in time, with the evidence that we have looked at today, I believe they will. So that's who's playing who. This is what the bookmakers think about proceedings this evening. This is the outright betting. Jim Lock, well, the two Jims go out as the two favourites. Long at two to one, McEwen at three to one. Anything that potentially tickles your fancy there, Mace? Well, the, probably in that order in terms of qualification, the, the, the four in the betting, the four favourites in the betting, in Jim, Jim, Adam and Tom, um, I expect them to be our semi-finalists tonight. That's, that's the way I see it going. Um, I've just uh, listen. We know Dan Reed can play at a, a, a really high level. We, we've seen it from him before. There's there's evidence out there. Maybe he's just got a little bit of a dip in form at the moment. Um, I fancied Oscar to qualify, which everybody was surprised about on Monday. He's done that. That's job done for him. I, I, unless he can find something that we've not seen so far this week and, and replicate some of the form he showed in that World Cup appearance, uh, I think I think qualifying for tonight is is where it ends for him. I think in his debut week as well, Oscar's played an awful lot of darts, 23 games. Everybody else has only played one group. And everyone's going to feel fresh tonight, maybe with the exception of Oscar Lukasiak. Now, if he goes on and puts a third Swedish name into Champions Week, I'll be the first to congratulate him. But I think he's up against it from an endurance perspective and maybe that ceiling of performance perspective. So that's why we look at someone like Mould, who's actually got... Uh, a big average this week in a loss. That still tells you something, though. His best winning average is still in that mid-90s. But McEwen, over the last couple of nights for me, has looked more likely to go higher than anybody else. So let's have a look and see what the bet builder is saying this evening. This is the amalgamation of bets that make their way through the exchange. To put it into a, a handy little accumulator for you. And the handicap betting, Jim McEwen under one and a half. So that's a 4-2 or better victory against Dan Reed at 5-4. to four. In the game between Morris and the Cassiat, Tommy Morris to get the better of him at 8-13. to 13. And then again in the handicap betting, Jim Long to get the better of Oscar, 4-2 or better. That is at even money and that pays just over 6-1 to one this evening. I like it. If I, was a, if I was allowed to have a punt, I, I'd probably follow that in. I think that's good. And it is, as you say, it's uh, the most popular bets currently on the exchanges all, all put together. And, yeah, it's hard to argue against any of those, Nico. I am not saying this because we had a very different discussion the last time we were on the stage two weeks ago. But I don't agree with any of them. And especially the last one. Because if you think about the head-to-head -head between Long and the Swede, everything's been 4-3. So the handicap is a real punt. And I don't think it's going to be like that. I think that will be close again. 18 plus B, gamblerware.org, if you're going to have a flutter on the Super Series scene. And right, is high tide to get the action underway here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. It kicks off with Jim Long up against Tommy Myers. It's a battle of England and Canada to get the action underway. And early on this evening, I caught up with both players to get their assessments of the week so far. Jim, here we are, back at a final here at the Moda Super Series. Group A winner once again. Just sum up your week so far. Uh, you know, it was good, actually. Um, Tuesday was very rough. I, I had, hadn't slept well when I got here. Um, and by the end of the day, I was pretty much worn out. But uh, since then, I've slept great. Um, I was some fortunate third dart doubles. It got me some wins that I needed. And so, yeah, I got a couple days off. Four wins out of five every single day. What does that say about your consistency, do you think? Hmm. Uh, I don't know, I guess. Uh, I know Oscar beat me twice and uh, played him the last match of the day twice. 
And um, there, there every day was good with Oscar, and um, and Dimitri got me the one day, and he played amazing. His finishing was great. So, yeah, I guess it was good. Yeah. It's been a good week away from this as well. Won a seniors tour event. How much would you like to cap off that trip to England with a Super Series title under your belt? Yeah, that would be amazing. You know, the seniors are are uh, because I'm out of any kind of point running this year, uh, starting fresh next year. Um, but uh, I play them because they're great practice, great guys. The players are fantastic still. And, um, you know, it's great practice before I come here. So, yeah, it's it's be a great way to end the week. Um, tough room today, obviously, real tough. So I'll just be happy if, if I play well and see. And just finally, it'd be a nice little family occasion if you were victorious tonight. Yeah, my daughter, Rachel, she turns 29 today. So happy birthday, Rachel. And uh, it'd be nice to win for her. That'd be kind of cool. Many happy returns to her. All the best of luck to you tonight, Jim. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Tommy, welcome back to Saturday here at the Super Series. Just sum up your Group C campaign. Oh, it was up and down. It was it was very dramatic towards the end, but it's uh, it's planned out well for me. Third time, third time lucky, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, it's been it's been nice to come back here, and it's hopefully I can get the job done this time. We saw the outpouring of emotion from oh, no. you when you got the job done yesterday. I suppose that's how much this competition means to you. Yeah, well, being local as well, it's nice to have an achievement and have this under my belt. And that last start, well, the second start that went in, I'd, I was got quite quite lucky, to be fair. So I took my luck as it, as it came, and uh, luckily I, I'd done it. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's one of them. <laughs> Being a local boy, does that actually add a little bit of pressure? Because you know if you get through, you're going to have people supporting on the Saturday night. You don't want to let them people down in the week. It's it's the same scenario at County for me, really, because everyone depends on me. Oh, yeah, Tommy's playing. He's going to go up there and hit, hit 30 average, easy win. It's not the case of that. I find this here, I've been here, done this. This is my third time now. I've just got to tweak a few things here and there, and hopefully I can get to the final because it's two semis so far. So with a bit of luck, I'll get there. Third time lucky, believe in omens. Hopefully, mate, yeah, hopefully. We wish you all the very best tonight, Tommy. Good luck. Thanks, Henry. Thank you. Well, Tommy is hoping to be the top gun. He's taking on the man who's flown all the way from Canada to be here this week in Jim Long. It's our first game of the evening, game one of nine, to see who's going to be the 10th player into the Champions Week field. And in the commentary box, it's a very good evening to Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. A very good evening, Henry. And welcome to the finals of week 10. As we inch closer to Champions Week, we start tonight with the winner of Group A, which is Jim Long from London, Ontario, which is not too far over the border from Detroit, Michigan. But this man is from just down the road. Pool in Dorset is not first too far leg. from it's here. First Jim to throw first. I wonder Game how many on. people he's brought with him tonight. I know that Jim Long is pretty much flying solo here tonight, but... Before we get too deep into this game, it sounds like it's his daughter's birthday today. And that sounds a bit like when Neil Duff was playing in a world final last year. He said he was going to win it for his daughter. 85. I wonder if Jim is going to win for his daughter tonight, Miss. Yes. Many happy returns, Rachel. I'm sure you're tuned in. 59. As are many others. And welcome to the action. We have around about four hours of action to bring you. 40. Six matches in the group phases and then straight into the semi-final, which will start when we join our friends at Sporty 60. Stuff TV at 10 p.m. And the final will be around 11 p.m. It's about tea time in Canada, isn't it? Just about. London, Ontario will be on 60. Toronto time, which is five hours behind. So at the minute, at 7.50. 85. Okay. Yeah, it's um, middle um, of the afternoon. And uh, for our Canadian viewers, tea time's not when we have a cup of tea. You'd probably call it dinner time, maybe? Something like that. Now, well, Jim has decided to go with 60. Monday White. He had three different coloured shirts in his Group A campaign. He went for white on Monday. He went for 135. red on Tuesday and black on Wednesday. So he's reverted to the first shirt of the week, which did yield his best average of his campaign. So if you think that's an accident, 78. think again. Dark players do think about things like that. As do a few golfers, Nico. Don't they just? Yeah. Worked out all right for Tiger Woods. 
94. Yeah, Ricky Fowler wearing a bit of orange on Sundays. Didn't do him any harm to date either. Well, Ooh. Jim, at the age of 55, has already talked about winning 82. a seniors event Tommy only six days ago. And he categorized it as good practice. This is a shot of double 16 for Tommy for an early break of throw. Now, you will see him throwing fast in the scoring phase. Game shot on the first you will see leg. Him pause Tommy Morris. For doubles. Yes, that is mo most definitely his MO. And it worked Second out. Second okay leg, it's Tommy there. to throw first. Game on. Now, as you look at this shot, the table to the right are very much 55. the Tommy Morris army. Friends and family down there supporting Tommy Morris, the Duke. One hundred. The, the Duke, rather than the gun. Listen to your uncle Mace, Tommy. He knows a thing or two about nicknames and dark branding. And we do think that he might have a bit of a future because he's in the infancy of his darting career. He's yeah, become a bit of a late starter, isn't absolutely he? Absolutely. A great county player for Dorset. He's 49. Some very good recommendations from some other great players on the South Coast. And if he was to get an early win against Jim Long, it would put him AC3. in a great position of possibly making a semi-final here. And these two do have something in common here tonight, even though they haven't played each other here before. Jim Long is in his second consecutive Saturday night. He's not failed to qualify when he's come here. But then again, Tommy Morris is the same. He's done it three times now. And he categorized in his interview tonight as third time lucky. Make your own luck, Tommy. That's all I'm going to say. 100. Spot on. We will alternate this evening. We're starting here with our opening match from Group Jimmy 1. We will then go to Group 2 for another Jim, Jim McEwen against Dan Reed, And then we will return to Group 1, back to 2, back to 1. And our final match will be Adam Moore on the second against Jim McEwen. Jim Long. Jim Long levels in 15 with a beautiful 112 out. Not a long format Third, here tonight. Jim to throw first. Still best of seven Jim legs. Long. I think it's a very fair format. I think if we went to best of five with all of our games, it would just be a little bit too short. But you do have a little bit of time to get 78 settled into the hockey here on a Saturday night in front of a crowd. If, if I would make a change, Nico, I don't mind it best of seven in the, the group games because that's how it's been. But as soon as we approach the knockout darts, maybe first to five and then first to six in the final. Yeah, I think that'd be fair. You see on the PBC Pro Tour that 24. they elevate from best of 11 to best of 13 in the semi-finals and then to best of 15 in a final. And we've seen, particularly very 60. recently, in a European final between Humphreys and Chisnell, just how much drama that can build up. That, in fact, is my favourite game of this year. Yes. It was special. I think my favourite game this year 98. so far... Probably Rob Cross against Gary Anderson. Oh, yeah, that was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, remarkable, the, the numbers. In terms of televised darts, that's, that's right up there, as is, i got to remember, it is this year, Michael Smith against MVG was a little bit special. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. 100. This is classic Jim Long here. But there is another gear to find. Did you do the MVG against Luke Humphreys in Poland? No. Oh. Yeah, that one's right up there as well. We could be here all day yeah. talking about game of the year. 100. Probably now Tommy required 142. 20. I'll tell you what we could talk about in the next leg. 40. Game of the Jimmy week. Jimmy required 101. Here. Because I'm pretty sure Tommy Morris was part of it. It might not have been about standard, but talk about drama. It's double 18 for Jim. 65. And he offers Tommy, Tommy a chance of a third consecutive break of throw. Can still finish. Not now. 42. Jimmy requires so 36. For our first hold and 
for Jim Long to lead for the very first time. Double nine. Game show on the third lay. Jim Long. It's all about. I'm sorry, Nico. It's just all about winning this opening game, isn't it? And these fourth leg. It's Tommy to throw first. Smaller game group on. phases of finals night. We've talked a lot over different Saturday nights this year. One hundred and twenty-five about the of not just who you play, but when you play. The other person in this group is Oscar Lukasiak of Sweden, and. No matter what happens 70. in this game, he's going to get more information about what he needs to do in this group than anybody. 98. And I've said on many Saturday nights before that I wouldn't want to play this first game. I'd want to play second and third in the group. Is there a, a benefit at all 100. of the group A spot of playing first and third? I... Yeah, I believe so. I just think, I think 42. if if when I play someone on that stage, if I've played and they haven't, I think I've got an advantage. I've already got rid of the early nerves. I've, I've got a feel for the stage again, and I'm comfortable. 100. But Jim, that is player dependent, isn't it? Some players are unaffected by that. And Jim's got a three-game break between this and his next one. 121. That's another thing that every group here when it gets every Saturday. Long's got to be really tricky here with the use of the numbers. See, now he can't use the 25 to get to a finish. 60. Tommy Didn't required 150. Elite level of counting. Should have started on 19s, maybe. Absolutely. Well, that was almost Wait, a triple you could, 15. You could go 19 and... Potentially, then go ball yeah, or then go shot trouble the fourth 20. Play. That's Tommy our second Morris. ton plus out of the match, and it tops the 112 from Jim in leg Fifth two. Leg, it's Jim to throw That's first. 43. Game on. Ton plus outs for the week. We had the most, of course, in Group A because that was 45 matches. We had 22 in the first three days of the week. 100. We had 11 in Group C, which. If you have an average over the amount of matches played, that was the least likely to see 140. But we've only had two averages this week of in excess of 100. Jim got one of them. The biggest one that Chris mentioned in our lead-up to this first game of 105 60. from Cam Crabtree, but he's not here. Yeah, and I, I think the fact that there's only been the two 10-plus averages, and as you say... One of the other people that got one, players that got one, he's not here. Does that play into the hands of Jim Long? I think it maybe does to a certain extent, particularly in his group, because I get the feeling that his 100. ceiling of performance is above the other two people in Group 1. And then with Group 2, McEwen's ceiling is 100. better than Reed and Mould. But the thing about this group scenario tonight is that it just has to be better over two matches than one person, potentially. Correct. 81. And I think how you approach these finals 100. Nights, Jim, you require a, a 160. Factor, how you mentally approach them. I'm seeing one thing from both of these players in this game. <clears throat> and it's something they've got in common, which is... They're not using the bullseye in the 25. 100. Effectively Tommy enough. require 101. Tommy's on three data because he didn't use the bullseye or the 25 on his previous shot. Could be get, could have had two at double 18. Exactly. He only gets one. 65. It's a bit off Jimmy line, but it 60. almost found the target. Long cleaning up in something like 17 darts. Game shot on the fifth play. Jim Long. <laughs> yeah, you can set your clock by it. 3 2 to the Canadian. So Sick far, it's so Tommy good. to throw you first. Just caught Game a little on. glimpse in the crowd tonight of a certain Josh McCarthy who has played on this stage previously. 100. Yep. Nice to see Josh here supporting Adam Mull tonight. Yeah, we've got the two other players that have competed this week who have stayed on in 96. Dimitri 
There is Josh giving us a thumbs up. And also Victor's 60. here. Yeah, Victor's at the back. You can't miss him. That track jacket's almost luminous. Sitting alongside Dmitry Zhukov before he goes back to Ireland, where he resides. 100. Long, very steady, but there you are. There's Dimitri on the left and Victor on the right. I'm sure he's going back to 100. Sweden tomorrow. Uh, is Jim just starting to turn the screw on Tommy here? If he can find uh, even a 97 at this stage. 59. No. That'll be relief for Tommy. Now, I'm not saying that Jim is a bad counter, but I'm not saying he's 40. someone who is doing elite things in approach. He's not doing what, say, John Part would do or someone of a younger ilk like a Luke Littler. They're not using the 18s and the bullseye to try and get to that finish just that one visit sooner. Old school. 82. I have to say yes. But James Wade has proven over the last five years that you can evolve with that. 99. Yeah, I was Jim, you required 164. That <laughs> my poor counting will get picked apart. This is for the win. It would be the biggest finish of the entire week. Oh, Jim. Game oh, shot what and the match to Jim Long two points in Group One, and even Tommy Morris gives him a hug for that one. He deserved it. Biggest finish of the week up until that point was Rennie Adams 160, which was days ago. But to send a statement to the practice room, he does have a mid 80s average, and his doubling in that contest was sublime, as it was for Tommy, as you can see. Two out of three wasn't bad, but it's not as good as four out of six. When we come back, we will look at group two, and it will be another gym. This time, it's McEwen at the hockey against Dan Reed.
Welcome back to the Motors Super Series where Jim Long has began on Saturday night. The vein that he left off with on Wednesday afternoon, getting the better of Tommy Moyes by four legs to two and rounding things off with a 164 finish, the highest of the week thus far. Well, he's put himself in a really good position ahead of his game against Oscar Lukasiak in game five. But we're going to part group one just for a second. I'm going to get the group two action underway now. It sees two players who went toe to toe in group B go head to head as Jim McCoy McEwen takes on Dan Reed McEwen coming into this competition fresh off a final appearance of the World Seniors match play in York. As for Dan Reed, looking to get a first title here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And earlier on this evening, I caught up with both players. Jim, here we are once again, finals night here at the Super Series and a very good weekly campaign for you thus far. Yeah, um, another uh, Saturday night for me. Um, this is my first two day session and you know what, I've really enjoyed it. Um, the week is, is a long week and it's tiring, but really refreshing this week. As well with the Group B, has it felt like you can really concentrate your best darts into a short period of time? Well, you need to, um, because it's only eight, eight games. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard, but if you concentrate, yeah, you're fine. Does it help you as well? Because you play a lot of open tournament events, which are quite similar in the fact you've got to play a lot of games that are short fight, but you've got to get in right from the get-go. Did that actually give you a bit of advantage going into that shorter campaign? Um, I, I don't think it gives you an advantage, Henry. Uh, you, you've just got to do it. I mean, if you if you have to do it, you need to do it. You've got to do it. Uh, it's, I, I like I like this format. Um, most of the WDF stuff, well, a lot of WDF stuff is first to three. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I suppose it helps in a way, yeah. Back into tonight. It's a night that you know all about. You've won a night here in Portsmouth and you won a, a lot back in Southampton. So you know exactly the, the intricacies of this particular format. Yeah, um, Modis has been good to me, especially in Southampton. Um, I actually prefer Southampton to this, this venue. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Nice bunch of guys again. Um, but it always is and it's always good players. How much would a second appearance at Champions Week mean to you? Oh, yeah. Um, I've, I've missed it because I hadn't been, I've not been here for a while. Um, yeah, another trip down, an 11 hour drive trip down would be nice in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> we wish you all the very best, Jim. Good luck. Thanks, Bill. Top man. Dan, here we are, back at a Saturday night here at the Super Series. It was uh, quite an interesting Group B campaign for yourself. Just assess how you felt, felt things, things went. went. Very inconsistent, to be fair. I started off well Thursday, first two games were good, and then I don't know what happened really. And then I lost the last two. Then come Friday, same again really. But then I knew the game of Kieran that if I'd won that, then I was through because I had two games to play and he only had one. So I put everything into it. I didn't play great in that game either, but I was just, get, just winning ugly and that's something I don't do. Do you know what I mean? I, do you know what I mean? When I don't play well, I normally, to be fair, get beat. But no, it's just got on to today, new day, and hopefully it goes well. So in today, do you kind of have to almost treat it like a new competition, almost forget what happened the last couple of days? Oh, 100%, yeah, definitely, yeah. Just got to treat it as just another, another tournament, another day. So, no, hopefully all, all go well. So in the Super Series format in Portsmouth, you hold the record for most appearances with Robert Thornton with eight, but yet to win a week here at the yeah. Super Series. How much would you like to tick that off your darting bucket list? Yeah, that's what I want to do, because I, I played well down Southampton. I played really well down Southampton, and I haven't really... Sh shown it here but it's a bit different here do you know what I mean I, I've, I've got to do a couple of things a bit differently I think um, now but I just I'd love I'd love to be a winner do you know what I mean in Portsmouth and just quickly I see some family friends in the crowd yeah yeah got a few down tonight which is which is always good but then it adds a bit more pressure but no nah, just hopefully play my game and I'll be okay I wish you all the very best thank you luck cheers Henry thank you welcome back and we're on stage now with Jim Versus Dan, which... Well, hopefully sees... we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that word will come up at least three times in a minute because Jim, who was really, really good in Group B over the last couple of days, and he did reference the fact that it was his first two-day qualification period because he predominantly does come here for a five-day campaign over two groups. But after a bit of a break, he's back on a Saturday night, just like Dan. And first leg, it's Jim to throw this evening, first. Dan is playing Game in on. his fifth Saturday night. Jim McEwen is only playing his fourth. But the difference between the two of them is that Dan hasn't won before. Jim has. Surely Jim didn't drive home 43. on the Monday 
to come back down. He must have, yeah, he must have just enjoyed a couple of days. I just had it confirmed. Yeah, he didn't go home after the seniors last weekend. 95. And he decided to probably just have a couple of days rest and preparation. And it it's, it's done him well because I thought he was brilliant Thursday and Friday. His, his running average, Paul. 97. Over the two days of play, 87.34. Now, normally, his strike rate is around 1.518s per match played. 57. So he played eight matches over the course of two days of Group B. So you'd think he would have eight 180s. Well, he was five short of that running norm strike rate. So he's due a few tonight. And two 45. of them came in in one leg and they were back to back. Yeah, if we look at it from baseball speak, where they look at the likelihood of someone hitting a home run and they have these decimal point statistics that go to three Six places. Three. Now, what you've just mentioned, the statistic for Jim, say it was 1.5. Yeah. So one and a half, 180s per game. This week, he's points three seven five. Now, in baseball terms, that's not the, ba not the worst hit rate. In darts, it's not great. But here's the thing. He dominated Group B. 140. Nobody was close to him. And he didn't need one of his biggest weapons. Now, if he has that tonight, can he be handled? Yeah, I mean, as you, meant, as you say there, without it, he still managed... An eight-match running average of eighty-seven thirty-four and thirty-six percent on the doubles, which is, which is only bettered by thirty-eight percent. Forty-four for Jim Long. Daniel required one hundred and forty-nine. We're all talking about the possibility of a, a Jim United derby in the final tonight, but there's still a lot of time between that happening and one hundred. Make sure it doesn't Jimmy happen. Jimmy require 132. But McEwen will be looking at the bullseye this time for a 1-3-2. Very similar start to the first game of the night, actually, but he'd love another one of those. Yeah, I think he just tried to crash that one in. There's a bit more on that one. But his throw is under pressure in the opening leg. 82. Dan, you require 49. Dan didn't have a problem getting out of the blocks on Thursday. He talked about that. Game shot on the first start leg. With the first Dan leg Reed. in Group 2. Now, let's get on to Dan Reed because we were watching that interview like all of you were on the Motor Super Second Series leg, YouTube channel. Second leg, to throw first. And Game thank on. you for joining us, by the way. But that word, hopefully. I watch those interviews and I pick up on certain words. 80. With Dan there, there was a lot of hope. Yeah, every time he referred to his chances, he was using the word, well, hopefully. And that usually is an indication of uncertainty. 140. And he out loud that he thinks he needs to tweak a couple of things, like Tommy Morris said in his interview, funnily enough, in order to have more success. 77. He isn't going to say them out loud, obviously, and that's entirely his prerogative. But the most important thing to Dan is to put them into play. Don't just think that improvement is going to knock on your door and give you success. 83. If you don't put things into practice, you will stagnate. And that brings me to one more point about Dan, and this is me on my soapbox, because of all of this talent coming through in the ADC now. 140. And more people knocking on the door of the Super Series than ever before. He's played in eight series now and not one a week. At which point do the organisers here at the Super Series say, well, you've had your chance. 100. Your invitation is no longer guaranteed. Some people just need to be shown the plank. And... Not that I'm trying to evict Dan. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is spoil well, him in your life. You have the right accent. <laughs> I think if somebody was to tap him on the shoulder and say, if you don't win tonight, you're not going to be part of Series 6, I think it would do something to him. Well, including the evolution of the 
ADC, Nico. 94. Gonna Dan, you require 144. To your route in for the majority is now going to have to be via the ADC. Or 128. Or in a calendar year, a, Jimmy a weekly winner. 84. Or a Champions Week winner. It's going to be. That's going to weigh the way this is going to go. How's this going to go? Already found a bullseye in this match. And Game he finds another the second one leg. to finish the second Jim leg. McEwen. And boy, did he need that. Because Dan was sitting on 16 points for 2 0. Chucky Third refuses leg, to, to lay down. First. Game on. Yeah, that's a fabulous response. 15 dart break of throw. Chucky's had a couple of different shirts over the last two nights. He had the black and white Chucky shirt on yesterday. A little bit of blue and 140. black on Thursday, but he saved the red one for tonight. Yeah, the other ones were a bit more Halloween-y. This one's a bit more patriotic. 125. Champions Week starts on October 30th. Halloween will be on day two. And there will be a fairly horrific theme for that second day of group I'm not, I'm not playing mate you're alright <laughs> 100 if you had somebody in there with a somewhat sinister image on his shirt it wouldn't be out of place that's for sure I do believe Dan's nickname is Dan the Man 57 is up there with mouldy <laughs> You love it, don't you? Critiquing nicknames? Absolutely, I do. 55. It's got to be good if you want to have some sort of impact. I like Chucky. I don't know the backstory behind it. I know he's been called it a long time. But it's it's got something. 60. Whereas Dan the Man... Uh, that's my reaction to it. And I'm the ultimate critic when it comes to nicknames and dart shirts. By the way, you will see Adam Mould. 128. In game number four and game number six of the night. Mould will play Jim McEwen in game six, but Dan Reed will be waiting in game Jimmy four. But what will happen before that meeting? McEwen would love two darts at double 12. One dart at his favourite double is what he will receive. 58. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's following Dan, the pattern of the opening match with an initial break of throw by the underdog in terms of the bookie. 94. Before the favourite for the match Jimmy required 20. responded with back-to-back -back legs, as did Jim Long. I'm reading something into that dart from Dan. Let's see if Jim can find that 2 1 lead. Game shot on the third leg. 17 Jim dart McEwen. from Jim to get that lead. But when Dan missed that bullseye, his facial expression told me thing, it's Dan to throw first. that he Game expected on. to hit that bullseye. You're not going to hit every bullseye you go for. Oh, smallest target on the board, of course. And if you aren't subscribed to the Motor Super Series YouTube channel, do yourself a favour and click that subscribe button and the notification bell because it's not just darts that you get in a live sense like this. You can watch back all of the different series. And we've now got this thing called the Bullseye Challenge happening where 60. people are going for the bullseye for 60 seconds. Yeah, I did have a, a great bit of uh, crack with Jim over that. For obvious 97. reasons, he's not the quickest throw in the world. I said to him, well, potentially, you'll get six points if you hit three balls. And Penny eventually dropped, and I won't repeat on air what he said to me in response. 100. Yeah, some people might think he, only, he would only get four visits in 60 seconds, but I think everybody who's tried that challenge is speeding up a little bit. Well, we were talking earlier today that, and yesterday, in fact, that Jim McEwen was listening to some very famous pop stars over the last couple of nights in the practice room. We heard a bit of Whitney Houston, which he says he doesn't mind. 
but he was Falsified. adamant it wasn't his idea to listen to Madonna. Uh, it was certain Mr. Kieran Tian, and ironically, as he was getting ready to come to the venue today, he had a, uh, a well-known music channel on the television, and guess what? Come on, Madonna, and he sent me a clip, and then Paul found a Madonna track called Jimmy Jimmy. Yeah, and we played it for him, and it brought a smile to his face. I don't think it's uh, be his walk-on song. I don't think so. But he does find a maximum to leave 116. If he gets a look at it. 26. Now, this would be Jimmy the Rikai biggest visit of the match. 16. If he takes it. We saw 164 from the other gym to win the first match. 57 in tops. Would give Jim a two-leg cushion. Game shot on the fourth play. Jim McEwen. Jim McEwen. Well, from trailing... Fifth leg, it's Jim to throw first. Game on. Paul, he's reeled off legs of 15, 17 and 15, including an 84 on the ball and that beautiful 1-1-6 to lead 3-1. Do you want to test how nerdy I am at things like averages? 83. So a 15, 17, 15 blitz is 47 darts, which is... An average of around 95.96. 95. 95. To be exact. <laughs> that was close. 95.94. I missed it by two hundredths. <laughs> 42. It's a lot in the 100 meter sprint, Nico. I was, I was just going to say, now I know how John Regis feels. <laughs> In the 200 metres when he was going up against Michael Johnson. 81. Well, Jim McEwen making quite the statement here. And credit to Dan Reed. He's averaging 91.26 himself. Not too shabby at all. 80. Ooh. I think Dan would agree that. The performance that he wants to put in, it is there. It's just about unlocking it. Wasn't it interesting, though? 100. In their interviews before this game started, that they both referenced how they liked the Southampton studio, and in Jim's case, more there than here, even though Jim's had success on this stage. Yeah, he probably feels that 95. at that particular time, he may have been playing better and, and played better there, and we're all... A little fickle that way, which is why some of us love certain venues that we've played in historically over the years. And eighty, you know, I lo I loved uh, I loved the tavern. A lot of people didn't didn't like playing there. They like, you know, they liked it as a venue, but didn't like playing there. I love playing at the Winter Gardens, where there's plenty of players that have had massive success else elsewhere and have just won the odd game. One hundred and five. Dan, you require 145. Ah, we have somebody using the bullseye in 25 properly. And that gives Jim McEwen potentially two darts to wrap up this match to be in a vastly stronger position than Dan Reed going into their Jim second games of the 96. group. 96. 116 for 3 1. 96 for the win. It is double top again. 56. And he bends the wire on his first match dart. Daniel requires 62. Reed has had four darts at a double in this game. That treble nine means that he can only get one potentially to save the match. It will be a double 16. Game and he shot saves on the fifth leg. Dan Reed. And a good save it was. Bit of gumption there as well. Sick yeah, though, it's down to throw first. Game on. Back. So one match start so far for Jim McEwen. Yeah, this game has been played at a very competitive level. High 80s 100. averages. 100. Well, I do get the odd whinge that I, I do make references to averages, especially when I've got a big sample. 
Jim's average this week, 87.34. His average currently, 87.29, playing to type. 60. It's a good thing playing to type when your type is good. But when your type is bad, improvement will be needed. 97. I wonder what we're going to get from Oscar Lukasiak tonight. Is it a good thing that he's playing in game three instead of really early? Because his starting ability this week... Honestly, it's like he was left in the traps a couple of times and he can't afford to do that on Saturday. 82. Yeah, it's almost like he'd pressed the snooze button on his opening matches. If you could picture a 100-metre race with seven runners and then Oscar is in lane eight. 60. They've already made the 50-metre mark and Oscar is just waiting for the gun still. But his ability to close the gap is very good. We'll get on to him. When he plays Tommy Morris next, and that's a game that Tommy needs to win. 134. Oscar will be through to the semis. Closer this game is, the more we have that possibility of the nine dart shootout, which we haven't seen 44. for nearly a year. The last person to win one is sitting roughly. <laughs> 81 centimetres away from me. I think it's 81.5, but... <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first stat I got wrong tonight. Oh, McEwen's got 25, so... He hasn't got a banker here to get to a finish. And with Dan... Within range 45. of leaving... A more manageable finish now... This game is in the balance. And it's being played at a very sedate pace... This is the closest game they've had AC1. this week because we haven't had many head-to-head -head records between some of the players in the group phases here tonight. It's just Jim Logger against Oscar in group one. And in this group, it's Jim versus Dan. So this is going to feel rather alien to Dan McEwen because he beat 4-1 the last two nights. This is a lot tighter. Yeah, he was... Desperate to try and squeeze a second trouble to any tops, though, for a 1-1-9. 79. Yeah, Jim's coming back for 80, and you can almost see the angst Jimmy in not finding 80. a 140 to get three at tops. May only get one at tops in this combination. I think Dan Reed's drawback there to his collarbone was very deep. But McEwen needs 25 and gets the ball. How many times does that happen? He was almost backed into a corner. He had to do that. But you 68. always run the risk of hitting the ball when you need Daniel a 25 40. to end on the hot spot. Reed tops for 3-3. Three, three. Game Gets shot on the sick play. And we go Dan Reed. to leg seven for the first time tonight with McEwen retaining the throw. Seven and final leg. It's Jim Can to throw first. It's all Game about on. that right now. And by virtue of winning that group B is why he has the honour in this opening match. The only match we pull up for is the final. I know we talk as well that we start knockout darts from the semi-finals, but effectively that could 100. happen a little bit sooner tonight. Depends on what happens in the first game. Well, the, the loser is very much in a a knockout match and even a win on some occasions isn't enough. Absolutely. We will give you all the permutations as and when they are appropriate. 60. Your referee tonight, Charlie Costafine, one of the best in the business. Doing a fab job. Yeah, I'm not going to badger you for permutations, Nico. This is session 17 on the spin. I'm no Henry. I think he did about 83. Oh, how good is this? 140. He's only got 180 in this game. Dan hasn't got any. But there have been plenty 140 plus scores. In fact, we've had 11. Then a game of this kind of quality, 57. I suppose you would have to expect Jimmy that. Jimmy yeah, 161. between 100 and 139. 
doesn't need to worry about the checkout. We may see that ball used again here. Hmm. 99. Oh, he went aggressive. Let's find out if he pays. They're not going for the 25. He could have been coming back. A single to double top. 140. But now, Jimmy requires he misses 62. 62. Having only one match start in this visit. It could be very tricky, this situation here tonight. One dart at tops. 42. This time, it's low. Yeah, and by going aggressive Daniel for the requires 164. he's cost himself a, dart, a double. Reed gets two. Game, shots, you can and see the what man, it means to him. Dan Reed. Dan the man has won his first game in the group, and Jim McEwen is backed into a corner. But if you are going to have a tough scenario here on Saturday night, you've got to win as many legs as you can to give yourself a chance in your second match. We won't see Jim McEwen again until game six when he takes on Adam Mould, and now that game takes on huge significance for the Scot. Dan Reed in the driving seat in group two. When we come back after this short break, it will be Tommy Morris fighting for his Saturday life against Oscar Lukasiak. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Dan Reed has come back from 3-1 down to get the better of Jim McEwen in a last leg decider. Game three of our session sees Tommy Morris return to action. He lost out 4-2 in the opener against Jim Ong, needing to win to keep his hopes alive. Up against the Swede, Oscar Lukasiak, his first game of the evening, and I caught out of him earlier on. Oscar, welcome to finals night here at the Super Series on your debut. First of all, how have you enjoyed this week? It has been really fun. Um... A good practice, good um, experience, and uh, really good. How do you assess and describe the way you've played this week? Started a little bit poor and uh, getting better and better, I think. So coming into Saturday night, do you feel like you're close to the top of your game? Maybe not the top, but I will do my best and hopefully get some wins. Yeah. What was your expectations at the beginning of the week? What would have been a really good week here for you? My goal was to get to the Saturday night. Night. So... That was my goal, and um, I've done it. So now I'm just here to have fun. 
Have fun and possibly win if you can. If I can, I will do it. Well, I wish you all the very best, Oscar. Good luck. Thank you. There we go. The viewpoint of Oscar Lukasiak of Sweden, who already has two of his countrymen into Champions Week, which will start on October the 30th. Not too far away. Only two more weeks to get through. And we will give you a glimpse into who will be part of week 11 throughout the course of our broadcast tonight. But Tommy Morris knows that when he plays against Oscar in this game, and it will be his first game against Oscar this week, so he doesn't know a great deal about this man from Scandinavia. But if Tommy loses... First it's though, gets Tommy to Tommy. throw first. Yes, sir. Game on. A win here for Oscar. And not only does he take him through, but he'll take Jim Long through with him. You see, this is why I like... One hundred. The idea of playing second because it's almost as if you get two cracks of the whip. Yeah. You know exactly what you've got to do. If you're playing the person who's lost, you only have to win one game to go through. Eighty five. Whereas if he was playing against Jim Long, his situation would feel a lot more murky. Fifty nine. So this feels like the first final on finals night. But I suppose when we talk about the man with the yellow flights, which look very pristine, by the way, that gets our approval, Oscar. 78. I spoke to Victor about the, the haggard yellow flights earlier in the week, by the way. He said he will stay on top of that in the future. But this week for Lukasiak, Group A, yes, he's right, it started poor. But by the end of Monday, he did beat Jim Long. And I think with that victory, he found something to work 60. on. 60. Yeah, that would have given him lots of confidence. My my only concern for Oscar has been that 38. inability to get out the blocks on the B of bang. It's been more on the G this week. It's almost like he's... Press the snooze button a couple of times. 45. Tommy, you require 164. Don't get me wrong by much. Three. He started to 100. find his feet. But tonight, you don't have that time. Yeah. Which is why I had so much concern in terms of him qualifying. If you don't win your games or a game in the group scenario, game three on a Saturday night is like the spoon in the Matrix. 88. There is no spoon. Tommy, you require 64. Double eight. Yeah. Game show on the first is under the blocks in Tommy this Morris. game with a 17 data. Second leg, it's Oscar to throw first. Game on. Tommy was the bookie's favourite for this one. Be no surprise. Eight to 13. I think having the darts in this contest is a big thing for Tommy. He didn't have them against Jim Long. 60. And Jim found some great stuff towards the end. You'd have said to me, 50. Monday morning, when we'd spoken for maybe a couple of hours from 9.30, when our Group A campaign started, that Oscar Lukasiak, at around 11.30 Monday morning, that he would be 140. here. I would have made a face. One what? of... Are you sure? Well, 136. I, I got that face after going up with... Henry after six matches and came down and I suggested that I thought he will make Saturday night. You gave me that very face, Nico. Who's laughing now? <laughs> 60. You are. So is Oscar. But an interesting, I mean I haven't I haven't spoke to him in any kind of depth. One hundred but I suggested when we opened the show that I think his main objective this week was just to make tonight and then see where it went from there. 125. And one of the reasons why he did get a slow start on Monday is because he was way more tentative with his action. It yes. looks, in comparison, from first 43. game Monday to now, Oscar, you require 160. he's gone from having a face wipe that is made of hedgehog fur or whatever the, the prongs are on their back to being the smoothest thing in the world. That's the difference. 
Yeah, 98. Not, I didn't expect him to react that way because, of course, he's, he's played in a World Cup in front of a, on a massive stage. 100. In front of Austin McQuire, 18. It's a very different atmosphere here. Still very quiet with people very close to you. Got to give this a go. Tommy's lurking on 72. Game shot on the second leg. Oscar Lucasio. A big sigh of relief from Victor Tingstrom there in the audience. And even Third though it's a, Tommy to a throw much first, bigger sample game on. for Oscar, is finishing this week is superior to that of Tommy's, isn't it? It is. 55. Tommy, 29% for the week coming into Saturday. And Lukasiak, 32%. But he is the only person in the Saturday finals in week 10 who has played two different groups. 100. A and B for a total of 23 matches. Running average of 83.33, which 140. isn't that bad. But his doubles percentage and his average as each day has gone by, has improved and improved to a rate that was more competitive in the last two days than the first three. 55. But strangely, even though he did improve 99. on the whole, from an individual game perspective, he got his best average in a win against Jim Long on Monday, the day that he performed... The worst. 140. Well, sometimes when you're playing the better players, that can... 99. You don't, you don't tend to get embroiled so much, do you? They're, you're not involved in a match where there's lots of missed doubles, which, of course, will aid the average. I already think this game has got 100. A Tommy requires 108. Legs. I don't see anybody dominating this game. No, certainly not this day. Well, that's that's in double 18 needed. Game shot, shot on the third leg. But I wouldn't mind Tommy seeing Morris. that 54 again because that was some sort of deflection. Yeah, I don't think it was. Well, it Fourth didn't leg. appear it's to, to throw be first. going Game anywhere on. near the desired target, but. And found its way in to the target to leave the double 18, which was nailed. As it stands, Morris 100. sits on zero points in group one with a leg difference of minus two. If he wins the next two 96. legs, he will have plus three for this game and add two points to his points tally and a leg difference will be plus one. That is enough to qualify. That's the magic formula of Saturday night. 140. Yeah. Two points and plus one or better guarantees qualification. 140. Do you think he knows that? Not many people do. I, I didn't. I don't think they do. Until I worked it out. No, is knowing that a good thing or is ignorance bliss here? Yeah, I think... I just think focus on winning the 55. game and hopefully everything else takes care of itself. Correctly starting on the 19s on 265, but missing 43. the target. I think my advice I mean, to... He'll be aware he's under huge pressure. He'll be aware that if he loses a match, that's it. But it feels like he's been under pressure in a Group C scenario for the last couple of days, so pressure will be following him around. 100. Like a rainstorm. Yeah, and then you just become ignorant to it because it's the norm. That's mm. what you call being comfortable with 100. being uncomfortable. Oscar, you require 106. The more you're made to feel uncomfortable, the more it won't feel alien. Just about gets the single six. 86. And a chance for Morris on Tommy 18s again. Yeah, and he's two from two on the finishing pool. One from five for Oscar. Step back. Have a little exhalation there. And hit. 97. Not quite. Oscar, you required 20. Well, that would have put him... One step closer and one leg closer to qualifying because that would have been a break of throw. As it is, game shot on the fourth leg. He's got to go again. 
16 dart hold this time for Oscar. And that the longer Fifth this game Tommy goes on, the more you game on. just start to lean towards Oscar. At least Tommy's still got the darts. Now, the best he can 100. do in this game now is to win 4-2. If he does that, nine dart shootout possibility is alive. We were within a manner of points 60. last week in a group with Alexander Mertz, Luke Littler. In their final game, 100. Had it gone the other way for Mertz winning 4 3 in that game. We would have had a nine dart shootout in week nine. We didn't. And then Littler would play his final Super Series match in the semi finals, losing to Sebastian Biowetsky. 100. But if Morris gets the next two legs and Lukasiak was to beat Jim Long 4 2, hello, extra darts. 100. Well, if Tommy can get the win here, he will become a very big Jim Long fan. I think everybody's a Jim Long fan. He's just so cool about everything. 85. Doesn't seem to feel pressure. No, if there's any. Any more laid back, he'd be horizontal. 80. I think if Tommy is to kick onto that next level to find more three-figure averages and that higher level of performance, I think that visit there categorizes where 100. I feel he needs to improve. Tommy, you require 121. He needs to turn those scores of 80 into 140. He's just got to concentrate that scoring into a better bubble. Speaking of bubbles, this one is a red bubble and it's not very big. 88. The bull lets him down again. Oski required 156. Lukasiak's biggest finish came on Monday and it was 114. That will remain the case for now. 100. The only time Tommy you ever leave yourself on 33. 33 is if you hit a 17 going for the ball or have a miscount. Takes his time. 17. Just misses out and Lukasiak can take 56. the lead with a break. Huge, huge moments for both. Tops, two in hand. Tens. 36. A lifeline for Tommy Morris. Tommy requires 16. But look at the amount of darts they're throwing. He's coming back for a double after already throwing 18. That is a nightmare. Eight. That is not a dream. Oscar, you require 20. He's let this one slip and he knows it. This is not a match start for Lukasiak. But it will yeah, put him the in leg. a very advantageous position. Yeah, because that was a break of throw. And he now has the darts to win it. 4-2. Sick thing. It's Oscar to throw himself first. in the semi-finals. Game on. His finishing up until that point had been clinical. 100. He's named the gun. And he may have to dodge some bullets. Yeah, I think he'd classify leg five as a misfire. 45. Sometimes you've just got to reload. And eye up the target once again. There are people in this audience who are genuinely nibbling on fingertips 100. right now. There are nuts available at the bar, by the way. <laughs> and other snacks. Oh, AC. dear, oh, dear. My word, that dart did a triple axel on the way down. <laughs> it just goes to show the angle of entry that Tommy has. It goes in slightly skewed to the left. And when it bounces like that, it actually does a helicopter move in the air before it 100. hits the floor. Pirouettes. You can see that wobble when it hits the board. The flight goes to the left-hand side. Some people can play with that kink in their darts. There are people out there who've spent years trying to fix it, including Peter Wright and Gary Anderson. 
100. Well, this is the ultimate red pen leg so far, Paul. Indeed. I was going to say at the start of the leg that he would take a 15. Oscar, you require 101. A brilliant end to a great match, and it would be to eliminate Tommy Morris from Saturday night. He's going to have to wait. 53. A little while longer. Tommy was fortunate to make Saturday night because Rennie Adams had three darts to take him out on Friday. 41. And it wouldn't have been Tommy Oscar that Oscar's playing 48. right now. It would have been Cam Crabtree. 48. But match darts are right in front of him. And double eight. 40. He's missed, but he's got time. The pit of the stomach of Morris will be very low. Because you can see from his facial expressions that he feels this game is up. 44. Oscar, you require eight. How many lives does he have left? 2 Four. Five darts missed for the match. Can somehow Tommy require 150. this 150 checkout save the skin of the gun? Seen one from Adam Mould this week. Not going to see one from Tommy Morris. And Oscar is going to fall over the line. 40. Doesn't look like it's going to be third Oscar time looking for Tommy. Four. He'll have to go through another campaign at some point in the future to try and get that elusive weekly title. Game, shot, and the match. That the Oscar Lucasio. will be in the semi-finals. What a series it has been for Sweden. And with a game to spare, Oscar Lukasiak will be in one of our final four matches here a little bit later on. Tommy Morris says goodbye for now. We'll see him sometime in the future. But that one, the win for Oscar by four legs to two, means that he's through, and so is Jim Long.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Oscar Lukasiak has sent Tommy Moyes packing here at the Live Lounge in Porsche. So two four two defeats for him means that he is eliminated. As for Dan Reed, he can secure his progression through if he can get the better of Adam Mould in this one. Victor with the first week of the year in 2023. Mould's looking to double up his tally and he caught up with me earlier on this evening. Adam, here we are, back on a Saturday night here at the Super Series. Bit of a dramatic day yesterday. Yeah, God, it was what a tight group, wasn't it? It was fantastic to be involved in. Uh, well, it's fantastic when you get through, but um, it was it was pressure and it was tight all, the whole day, and it was it was great. It was yesterday a demonstration of your battling qualities and holding it together and putting out big moments at big times. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I was just sort of taking it one game at a time. Just just it was more about getting the points. I was just determined. I was really I found a focus yesterday where I was just got to get 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 the wins on the board and. Um, there was a stage like when I, Cam was playing so well at the time and I thought this is a tough game and I was trying to work out how I could still get through and lose to Cam. <laughs> and luckily, um, I, I won that game and, and it went from there. Do you feel like you've been put a little bit under the radar this week? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's up to you to say um, I've come here as normal. I've prepped the same way like I have every week I've been here and I've just, like I say, just try and win the games. Um, if I'm going under the radar, then I said last night and I like that. So back into tonight, you've won a week here before, the first week of the year. How much can you use that experience coming into tonight? Yeah, of course, yeah. I've, I've done it before, so why not again? And you've got the Ellsbury Massive with you? I'm not sure, to be honest. I know the wife's coming, and I think a couple of friends come in because I saw they played in the vault here earlier, so um, a, a few will come, I hope. Well, we look forward to seeing them. We look forward to seeing you in action. Adam, good luck. Thank you, Henry. Great to hear from Adam, the current... Amateur dart circuit ranked number one player in the United Kingdom. And it's not close at the top of the rankings. He's <laughs> at the top of the rankings by about 85 furlongs because he plays that many tournaments. He is almost addicted to playing competitive darts. And why wouldn't he be? Because the challenge to a semi-finalist, his career best, as you can see. But first leg, it stands to throw he has first. Had quite the Game year. on. Has the man joining us here in game number four? Yeah, it's serving him well playing all those ADC events. I talked about the gap at the top of the rankings on Thursday. 60. It's almost to the tune of he's got the ranking gap of someone just outside the top 10 and how many ranking points they've got in total. 100. It's kind of silly. Yeah, they are going to rejig those ranking system is now going to become your best 10 results in a 100. season. 100. Now, what do you make of the keywords? That's very much a, a now word, isn't it? Keywords. Of 60. the interviews of some of the players tonight, there's a great deal of hope on the stage yeah. and maybes and hopefullys yes. and luckilys and come on, lads. There's not too much assurance. Two words I love. I will. Nobody says that enough on a Motor Super Series interview. I will. I tell you, someone who does, though, Conan Whitehead has already said he will be the Series 5 champion, and I love that. 100. Time to get with Conan and be a bit more assured. But Adam Mould, I think, making Saturday night in the group that he was in, I think he should be very proud of himself. 100. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel required 101. But it won't mean too much if he doesn't win this match. And it's not over for him. 77. Long... Well, it's not going to be over for him, it... depending on the result. Because ultimately, if, if Dan Reed wins this one, it's just a straight shoot. 140. Between Adam Daniel and Jim, required isn't it? 24. Absolutely. But. Again, it's not being on the end of a thumping going into a a game on the back of that. No score. Emotional Adam, damage. Adam, you require 60. Adam shouldn't really be looking at this 60. Oh, he's had four darts, Dan Reed, to win the opening leg. And this is a break opportunity. And he takes leg. it with Adam both Mom. hands and says, well, if you don't want it, I'll have it. I know there are going to be some people Second out there on social media. And please feel Game free to on. get in touch with us tonight via our social channels, be it YouTube, 
be it TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. 95. And there will be people out there with a negative mindset saying, well, yeah, Adam's ranked number one in a system that's very young and it's, it's not the PDC, it's not the WDF. 100. There are thousands of players trying to do what Adam does. He's at the top of the tree. He's put in the yards. He's put in the work. And he has got to where he is. And my point being 96. as well, that if you are the number one at anything, you are going to feel good about it. I do, Nico. <laughs> Get off that box. 50 You're right. Yeah, listen, there is literally thousands of players in the ADC system. Currently, he's the most successful and deserves credit for it. But because he's tasted success here before, beating 73. Ian Moss at the start of the year, I think that started him on this path and how he would love to win with a very different feeling. Yeah, I agree. 65. It, I think in an interview he did in the week with Henry, he even admitted that it sort of came from nowhere but gave him the confidence to go forward, which is what he's done. Well, one thing that has happened... Is that 81. because of that, he's signed with a darting manufacturer. And for some people, that's the dream. Yeah, he's with Target now using a, a Target dart designed for him. 100. And that feels... Adam, you require 156. Like you've made it. Yeah. When you're growing up, all you want to do is have that dart with your name on. Yeah. And you look at the box and he's got your picture on it. I'll never forget it. 44. Have you got a set of the very first ones? Sadly not. Wish I did. Do you know anybody who has? No. No, m m most of my my stuff ended up lost or in the bin. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. 68. Yeah. yeah I some, Adam, you require 112. I do have my first ever dart shirt, which is ridiculously small, but I was very young, which I am going gonna, gonna to do something with that. I think something like that needs to be preserved. And I think that shirt that Mouldy wore... That night here in January. 46. That should be preserved. Dan, you require 110. Yeah. What would we be saying in a couple of years' time, maybe? Double top for Dan. 90. That's another missed dart, a double. That is. Adam, you require 66. Chances missed. And he could pay the penalty again. Double 12. 2-0. Game show on the Things second are very interesting Adam in Mold. group two, aren't they? Because Dan Reed, who got that 4-3 win against Jim McEwen, possibly against the run Third of form, Dan to throw is first. now in deep trouble against someone who knows how to do it on a Saturday. Yes, uh, Dan's being punished at the moment. Five darts at a double in leg one. One in leg two. Two nil down. There are two words that I was thinking about when it came to Dan 100. Reed tonight. I thought if he started really well tonight, there's one thing he really wanted not to happen, and that was the drop-off. 140. It happened drastically on Thursday. He went from a 96 average, and it started to go downhill all night. 100. That cannot happen here. No, and he, in the end, could say was just a little bit fortunate. 54. But when your name's on pot, that's what happens. You find a way. These guys aren't actually that far apart geographically because Dan is from Thatcham in Berkshire. 59. Whereas Adam is from Aylesbury, which is in Buckinghamshire, neighbouring counties. Heavyweight counties, you could say. They've had some great 100. county and international players over the years. And when you think about Buckinghamshire darts, look no further than the Queen of the Palace, Fallon Sherrick. And she's had a pretty good day. Yeah, congratulations 60. to Fallon. Dan, you require 112. A great position for Grand Slam qualification. And she's assured, alongside recent visitor to Portsmouth, Makura Suzuki, that they are going to Alexandra Palace. So well done, ladies. We'll yeah. see you there. Back-to-back -back wins for Fallon. In fact, it's three on the spin, isn't it? She won the last of the group of... 81. 
Women's Series event. Daniel Since she hit the double 74. today. Might even win another one or two tomorrow. But this is about winning now, and Reed has got to find a double. 34. Well, in American football terms, that was a zone read. But he didn't find the target. Pass incomplete. Oh, boy, this would be really cruel, but this is what you've got to do. 89. Dan, you require 40. Got to find it. Game shot on the Finally third leg. Finally gets there. Dan Reed. So with nine darts at double, he finally finds a target to get fourth within leg. one it's of Adam Moore, still retains the advantage here in our fourth game of the night. 85. Got some supporters out there as well, has Adam. And they're very good friends of Fallon Sherrick, in fact. Just goes to show the Buckinghamshire... 100. Massive. They're not just in Wigan with Fallon right now. They're in Portsmouth with Adam. I played my first ever county game for the gay squad. Away from home against Buckinghamshire. I'll never forget that game. I was awful. My... Debut game was against Gwent. Early nineties. How did it go? Yeah, I won. I won. I won on the Saturday in the B. Man of the match got promoted onto the into the Sunday. Did you ever play in the B again? Never. There you go. The exact opposite to my A career for Northumberland. <laughs> I played one hundred and forty one A game. An absolute mystery. I think I just preferred playing on Saturdays. Not a bad thing for the Super Series, 100. Because we don't play on Sundays. No. There you can see the angle of attack that Dan can see. 100. Very well thrown darts Adam, you there. Adam, you 121. Mould to close the door. He's been excellent on the double so far. Two hits from three. Not getting a dart at the ball. 53. So Dan, you require 94. Dan Reed now. Treble 18 and tops. May go double, double. Yes, tops. 54. Adam, you require 68. Adam looked a bit tense when he retrieved his darts after the last visit. Can he make himself feel better? Double 16. He's chuntering to himself. Game shot on the fourth leg. And he keeps chuntering Adam with Mold. a 3-1 lead. Well, if you look at what Dan Reed has got fifth leg, it stands to throw first. Game on. For group one. We talked earlier about the fact that Tommy Morris could win his game by four legs to two and qualify. He didn't do that. He lost the match and he saw the exit door. But for Reed. 85. He doesn't have that situation where he can get a certain amount of legs and be guaranteed because when you win 4 3 in your first game, if you want to get through one hundred and thirty four, the last game of the group, you've got to win it. Yeah, looking at Adam, he was statistically the third best player this week. 85. 85 22 running average. Very tidy on the doubles, 34%. Good 180 count, 11. 59. One of those crazy weeks where Adam had his best average in a performance where he lost. That happens now and again. 180! That's super Series, that's our first max. In fact, it's... 98. Daniel Dan required 151. Yeah, this week has not been about huge maximum hitting. It's been about knife edge stuff. 91. Particularly in the group that Adam was in. Where the last three games saw three players 
playing the other three players who weren't going to qualify. 150. Had all three Daniel of them won, 60. They would have been separated by leg difference en route to Saturday. Dan Reed needs tops. Now tens. And might 50. just find himself in a very bad Hasn't spot. Required 95. It was all joy after game one. He might be sweating buckets after this. Got a good ball, surely. Well, he went aggressive. Is he going double-double? Well, if you're going to go double-double in that 55. spot... 55. I like two double 19s because you're staying 10. in the same sort of wedge of the board. Yeah, you're in the same zone. This is a horrible double to throw at, to stay in the match with only two in hand. He has Game done shot well on the there. fifth leg. Super Reed. dark. 17 dart hold in the end. Well, he's not happy about something. B happy about the double five. Sick though, he's had him to throw I first. I classify Game Dan on. as a glass is half empty kind of guy. Well, that glass is about half empty. But in this game, he's Falsy focusing seven. more on distraction than what he needs to do. Yeah, I'm not sure what went on there. I don't, don't believe Adam. 100. Did anything? But no, I don't think it was Adam. I think it was somebody in the audience. Yeah, quite possibly. But that leg could be 100. Enormous. We just don't know how crucial it could be for him to stay in the match at that point because if he misses and Adam hits, a 4-1 loss Falsy would four. take his leg difference to minus two. And that would be brilliant for Mould. Oh, it would have been. It would have been brilliant for McEwen. 174. Yeah, it sure would, because although McEwen was beaten, it was only by the odd leg, 4-3. 134. He's still got that look of disdain on his face. Falsy one. If he's playing with it and using it to his advantage, I applaud him. He's not going to leave a finish unless he hits a treble. Falsy one. Adam, you require 139. That's the why he went to the 60. I've got no clue. I'm with you there. We take 99 from here to leave tops. 59. He's going to be coming back at 80, and we know that can be sometimes a little dodgy. The difference between having three darts at tops and 100. possibly only one. As we require 80. Is huge. This has got to be a really good single. May see him move back the other way. No, he's going to go even further left. Go the other side, Adam. Falsy. I just think that was too acute. Can you require 82? I think that shot just had to be so precise from that side. That's lucky. Double 13. 69. You would classify that as unlucky based on the first dart, but then again, I don't believe in a great deal of luck in darts. I think you make your you own luck. require 40? And now Mould does get three darts at tops. Easy, easy for you to say with a major in your back pocket, Nico. <laughs> Double ten. More match darts for Mould. Thirty. Thickness of the wire away. Daniel required thirty. Without hesitation, he's straight in for double four. Game shot on the sick play. And he's alive in this Dan game Reed. in the same sort of vein he was against Jim McEwen. Now, this is very different. This game. This cutthroat format Seven that we have on leg. Saturday Dan night to throw first. now gives us Game a very on. different situation because if Dan Reed wins this leg, he's in the semi-finals, and Adam Mould will have to beat Jim McEwen 100 in the sixth game to see his way through to a semi-final en route to a second weekly title. Yeah, our, our well, our final match. 100 in group one is literally. For bragging rights to who's he top, who will top the group. But as you say, Paul, 60. A Dan Reed win would mean Mould versus McEwen straight shootout. One 
One hundred. Mold had four match darts. No dart player wants to hear that. One hundred. The situations where you clear a game with your first match dart. They're the games that make you feel good. Yeah, and you, I mean, I've had situations where I've got to the to the verge, but forty three. I've never had a match dart, and in that situation, you again, you don't feel too bad. But when you get four. That smarts. 96. Reading control, but pressure must come, and it must arrive now. 84. It doesn't. Daniel requires 105. Costs him a finish. If he was to come back, of course, because Dan's got tops to win. Game yeah, shot and the match. He doesn't just Stanley. win the match. He wins the group. And if you think about the odds for him to win tonight, he was one of the outsiders, one of the biggest of all. He's still going on about the distractions. And here's the thing, Dan. You've won the group. Get off the stage. Celebrate. Stop focusing on the negatives. That's me off my soapbox. Let's focus on the next match, shall we? Let's go back to group one with Oscar Lukasiak taking on Jim Long for bragging rights at the top of that group. Welcome back. Game five sees the victor of the match between Oscar de Kasek and Jim Long. Top group one. Let's see who the victor is going to be in this one with Chris and Paul. Thank you very much, Henry. Yep, this is quite simply playing for position. Winner wins the group and plays in our first semi-final against the winner of our final match between Adam Mould and Jim McEwen because Dan Reed first leg it's Oscar to throw first group two with Game two on. wins and he is on four points know each other very well of course these two 
think when they said good evening to each other earlier, it would have been long time no see. We haven't seen each other since Wednesday. And when they did do battle in Group A, it always went 4-3, which is fairly similar to what we're seeing here tonight. 100. Yeah, which is why you opposed the bet builder, wasn't it? Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that handicap minus 1.5. Because I get the feeling this game could be close again. 60. But I am thoroughly prepared, Mace, if <laughs> somebody wins by four legs to two to smell eggs near my my face because it wouldn't be the first time I'm wrong. Won. Well, I did like Jim at four to seven for this one. I thought that was uh, fairly generous. Curiously, it is Lukasiak who has the two wins over Jim this week compared to 100. the one for the Canadian. And we do have a scenario tonight where they could actually play a fifth time. So imagine if Jim gets the win in this one, tops the group, and then Lukasiak would 55. potentially play Dan Reed in the semis. But if they face off in the final, it would be the decider of their head-to-head -head as well as the decider for week 10. Yep. 60. That final meeting, well, well, the potential final meeting could be for £5,000, of course, and an opportunity to play for that £20,000 winner's check. 77. £5,000 is a lot of Canadian dollars. It's even more Swedish krona. Yeah. It's a lot of krona. 65. In fact, it would be, based on the current exchange rate, something just over 66,000 krona. Wow. You need all of them to live there. Just about go out for a, a good weekend on that. I was just going to say it would get you around at the bar. 81. Oscar requires 76. It's roughly 8,200 Canadian. That seems a bit more realistic. Double top for Oscar. 56. The last thing Jim needs to do now is slow down, but there's one thing we learned from group, group A this week is that you are allowed one mistake per day because that's exactly what Jim did. 77. Oscar requires yeah, I'm not 20. saying it's dear in Sweden, Paul, but they, the government actually introduced a... Game show on the first leg. That you, Oscar you can't buy cheap alcohol. And they there actually is a second like a, leg, it's Jim to throw a ferry first. that takes them all off somewhere to buy cheap grog. One hundred and forty. If there's one country on earth that does in my experience the best libations is definitely Canada. But then I am biased, but I've spent a lot of time there. 136. They have some great beers. They have these things called Caesars, which I absolutely adore, made from Clamato cocktail with spices, like Worcestershire sauce and Tabasco and things like that. Every country's got its own little, little thing to say, that's ours. Yeah, they're getting more and more renowned, of course, for their IPAs as well. 60. Along has come a, a very vast journey over the last week and a half. He could leave the United 60. Kingdom with an awful lot of money and make this trip very worthwhile. Yeah, I wonder... Jim's the kind of player, I think, that does need something on the line. You think about what some Canadian players have done in the past. And John Part's tournament history and his story tells you a great deal about sacrifice, about going vast distances to prove himself. And look at Jeff Smith the last three or four years. 82. The amount of transatlantic flights he has taken 
would rival Gary Mawson at his peak. Yeah, the amount of luggage he's lost. I don't know anyone who loses his luggage more than Jeff Smith. 100. And he can't fly direct to the UK because he's got to get an internal flight to somewhere like Montreal or Toronto first. Whereas it's probably a little easier to get here from London, Ontario. You can either get the flight from London to Toronto and then on, or you can just drive to Toronto, which is probably about two hours. Maybe three in bad traffic. That's a nice dart. 87. Sets up the two darter, Jimmy but Jim's already 42. on a two darter. Yeah, not had a dart at a double yet. Incoming. Dart one and dart two. Well, before that visit, their Austria averages were identical. Just goes to show how tightly packed these two are when they play each other. Hence the 4 3 results. Double top for distance. 18. Jimmy Had a chance, requires but 16. I get the feeling he won't have another. Let's find out. No score. Well, I was wrong about that. Oscar required 40. So, for this double top shot, I'm going to stay completely silent and see if Oscar hits it. I'm Game shot on the second leg. Oscar Lucasia. Performance levels of Jim Long. He did play. Third leg, it's Oscar to throw first. Okay. Game on. Against Tommy in the opening game, 84 71, but. He's 2 0 down to someone averaging 75 here. Oscar is two legs away 60. from winning his group. And if you'd said to me when we were live at around 7.31 local time that it would be Lukasiak and Reed winning their groups. 140. I would have looked at you very strangely. I wouldn't have believed that, but it's a very real possibility now. Yeah, I would have checked what's in your peppermint tea, Paul. 134. There is a very happy Swedish young dart player at the back of the room sitting next to a fairly content Latvian player at the back of the room, and Dmitry Zhukov, who's had a great experience here this week. 81. They were all in Group A, of, of course, weren't they? Joined by Connor Hopkins as well, who got valuable experience here this week. 100. Rennie Eidams has not stuck around. He's gone back to Germany today after a very dramatic Group C campaign. But I get the feeling that Andreas Harrison and Anton Erstlund will be watching this keenly. To 96. see if Oscar's going to join them in week 13. We did see last week, at this part of the night, Andy Bolton playing Sebastian Biowetsky, and they had... 59. I can see it about a week after. It was a pretty awful match. But then when they played in the final, because they both won their semis, a much improved game because it felt like more was on the line. 85. And I think you're right, Mace. Oscar I'm not judging Jim by this game. I'm going to judge him by his semi. I just, think, I just think he needs Jimmy something on it to get the, get the best out of him. Let's see if he likes a 99. Who doesn't? Obviously, Jim. 59. Oscar required 56. For 3 0. I didn't see this coming. Got to be a bit more accurate with his first crack at tops. Game shot. And if the there's third one line. double this week Oscar Lucasio. that has been better than any other, I would have to say it's double 10. Yeah. He did have Both a couple of spells where first. he just Game didn't on. look like he was going to miss it. What's this going to do for Oscar's confidence? I said that I'm not going to judge Jim on this performance because 
It's just about winning the group, not winning the night, but... 140! Well, you, you called it early. You just didn't like that handicap bet, did you? I For, didn't. And you're spot on. Ninety-nine. I think there are many different sayings in sport that people 100. tend to hang on to to help themselves in situations like this. But this is if Jim Long has got four putts to win a hole 123. against someone in a match play match and he is genuinely just hitting the putt a third at a time <laughs> like that happy gilmore 91 yeah. uh, piece in the film just tap it in and then he speaks to the ball and he says do you not want to go home are you too good for your home Ninety-nine. Jimmy well, Rakai, one hundred and seventy. That's for sure. Remember his finish in his last match of a one-six-four. That was to win the game. Ooh. One hundred and thirty. He gets the baby fish approach. Oscar's dreams of a four-nil victory and our first match not to go. Six legs tonight. We'll need. 100. Jim Long to Jim miss three darts at tops. 40. He's already missed four darts in this match at the outer ring. Double 10 to break that streak. Double 7. 33. Very messy. And Oscar now Mikashiak does 80. have a chance to win by four legs to nil. To win the group. Yeah, trouble 20, double 10, 20, 20 tops. I think he'd have preferred a dart. 10 Nico than tops. <laughs> uh, well, let's find out. One for tops. 60. Flips the underside of the wire. Jimmy requires and seven. And Mace might be right. Double 10. He wants. Or maybe prefers. Madhouse for Jim. Game shot on the fourth the match continues. Jim Long. But only just. Oscar. Has had a match dart. Fifth leg, it's Oscar to throw first. Game on. Jim just had a an interaction with somebody in the crowd. I'm not sure what that was about. But I'm sure that Jim and Oscar and Victor and Dimitri have struck up a bit of a friendship 40. this week. Yeah, I think they were having a little bit of banter. I think Jim's been a real hit this week with a lot of people. But then again, the, the Canadian way of 60. living, it's... It's something that permeates everybody when we have a Canadian player here. Yeah, he's, in, he's impossible to just dislike. I, I always used to find it easier to, to play someone if I didn't particularly like them, but... 60. Yeah, I could never quite get that angst with John, actually, as it goes uh, over the years. I was constantly trying to, you know, generate that, not genuine ill feeling, but... 95. A motivational factor. I always found that trying to beat Canadians, that you, you couldn't kill them with kindness because they'd be way more kind than you, no matter how kind you are. 100. One of my favourite trips to Canada, I went to Nova Scotia and I met someone for the very first time and they'd heard on the grapevine that 133 was a Pittsburgh Penguins hockey fan and a collector of casino memorabilia. And when I arrived at this guy's house, he said, do you want to have breakfast here? And I said, yeah, that sounds great. And he gave me 60. a playoff Sidney Crosby Penguins jersey and two casino chips from the local casino. I said, oh, that's such, such a Canadian thing to do. 97. Oscar, you require 141. I, <laughs> I think we could all learn something from that. Pay it forward. Kindness is a weakness, Nico. No, it's Jimmy not. Jimmy require 116. 
it could be construed as a weakness in darts and in sport. Double top. 96. The match might be over Oscar again. Oscar requires 76. Well, should, should get at least one dart here. He would love two at double eight. And he's not going to get two at double eight. He's going to get one at tops. 36. He clips the other side of the wire this Jimmy time. Jimmy required 20. Jim needs double 10. It's a cagey affair. And now it's double five. 10. This game should be over now. No last start long this time. Oscar, you require 40. Is it going to be tops? Game it is tops. And the match. And against Oscar the runner Lukasiak. this week, it is Sweden's Oscar Lukasiak who wins Group 1. And he will play in the very first semi final tonight against the person who finishes second in Group Number 2. Is that going to be Adam Mould or is it going to be Jim McEwen? Find out after the break. This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Without further ado, let's get into our last group match of week 10 on the Saturday night finals. At the conclusion of this game, we will find out who all of our semi-finalists are. We already have one fixture in the books for the post 10 o'clock show. And that will be Dan Reed against Jim Long for a place in the final. But that will be semi-final number it's Adam's two. To throw first. As for... Game on. Who will play in the first semi-final and effectively staying on the board? You have to win this game first because Dan Reed's already won this group by beating both of these gentlemen. This is a 57. knockout match before we effectively get to knockout darts. Yeah, quite simply. Winner through. Loser. BFH. Who fans One hundred and eighty to know what I'm talking about? It's of course bus fare home from Bullseye. Maybe this is the right time for the one eighty to show up. Almost feel they're going to need to. When I said this is the right time, I started to sound like Yaz. Do you remember that song? This is the right time, or was it Lisa Stansfield? That was Lisa Stansfield. Ah. 60. Well, some of these players have been around the world, I, I, I. <laughs> but can you find your baby? 59. Well, Lisa was from Rochdale, wasn't she? Yes. Famously. Yeah, she didn't 
sound like she sung, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the difference in normal speak to singing voice, I've never seen anything like one it. But the one he doesn't show The Jew, he's due a bucket full. I think sometimes when you have travelled an incredibly long way to come here on a Saturday night Jim, you and for your qualifying 81. campaign, you just look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm not going home without more money than I've got. How Aim about Sean that the for first like from Jim McEwen? Jim McEwen? Statement made and break immediate. Yeah, 11 dart, break of throw. Second leg, it's Jim to throw first. Three more of those, on. Jim. And it's job done. Well, Adam Mould has just woken up in the morning, gone to pick up a shirt to wear, and he's found Chucky in the closet. An absolutely horrifying start there for Adam. 60. Not because he played badly, just because his opponent played so well. And that is equally the best leg we've had this week. Yeah, we've seen multiple 11s. Not seen a 10. Yet. 57. Or a 9. But if I may dispense with the splinters in the seat department, has anybody played well tonight? No. No, not yet. 58. We've had... Well, even in... I suppose game of the night was, was Dan against Jim. Dan had a... 89.37, 4 out of 9 on the doubles. Jim 40. had 87.34, it went all the way. Jim's doubling was okay, 3 from 7. And a 116 in there. But going into that game, it was 8-2. Aggregate in favour of 46. Jim. Both matches being 1-4-1. One, one. If Jim or Adam... Can qualify and go into that first semi-final. He could have a crack at revenge at Dan if he makes the final and they do as well. How many times do we see people playing each other twice on a Saturday night? And sometimes it goes the other way, doesn't it? To the chagrin of the person who beats them <laughs> first. 82. This does have the feeling of a final because of the situation they're in, and because these are two previous weekly winners. And if you think about 121. their making Saturday nights, Mould is currently in his fourth. Sorry, he's in his second from four attempts. Jim McEwen is perfect. He is in his fourth at the fourth attempt, and we saw an awful lot of that last 99. week. 99. Adam, you require 142. Great first start. I don't blame him for staying on the 60, actually, because 110. Jim McEwen's been so good Jimmy around that 60 bed that he might even get a shot at double 18 here. Yeah, and Adam's strike weight, when he does pin the trouble 20 with dart one, has been good. Oh, double 18 for an absolute corker. 138. Adam was right. Adam, it just goes to show 32. how much he respects the ability of McEwen at this moment. Game show on the second leg. But this is one all. Adam Mould. Dodges a bullet. Could have been 2 0, but now he's level and he has his throw. Third back. leg, it's Adam to throw first. Game on. Yeah, good response there. 16 dart break back. 134. And don't forget to join us when the semi-finals take place shortly after 10 o'clock. Whether you're tuning in on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel, like you are watching right now, we will join our friends at Sporty Stuff TV at 10 o'clock local time. Five. Yeah, that's for our UK viewers. Also, welcome along to those of you watching via your betting app. We know thousands and thousands of you watch via that and there will be people on the other side of the world probably having Fawlty. their breakfast watching this a lot of my friends in Australia tend to watch Saturday nights while having their bacon and eggs yeah it's great isn't it 
when Ray Raymond Smith was playing, we had 100. loads of intera interaction, didn't we, with the Australian, well, his friends, fans and family. I want to see Raymond back here before the end of the year. 100. Hint, hint. I don't know if it's going to happen. I genuinely don't know. But I'd love to see Raymond back here and Ben Robb, who has qualified for Ali Pali later in 2023. Well, this is better than five, which is what his first visit of the leg was. One it's now 180 number three. As, as many as he hit in the week. Well, should I say Thursday and Friday. So 60. So used to seeing Jim, of course, for the week. Oh, hello. 180. <laughs> the second time. I don't even recall 167. Did he get any 180s in his first game? No. Oh, one, sorry. So he got so, one. Yeah. 57. So what you're saying is, Jimmy in nine 36. games, he got four 180s. And in this game, he's got four. He's actually got in this game what he's done the entire the third competitive leg. week. Jim McEwen. That is a remarkable leg of darts from one of Scotland's best players. Well, his winning Paul legs Blake, Jim to throw in this first match. 11 and 13, Paul. Average of 106.07 currently. Not too far away from the best average we got last week, which was Luke Littler, who was eliminated in the semi-finals by the eventual champion, Sebastian Bioetsky. One of four countries that are now represented in Champions Week. England, who have multiple players. Poland, just the one. And the Netherlands 60. do have one in Marino Mikels. But Sweden have two. If Jim wins tonight, Scotland have their player into Champions Week. He is absolutely in the zone. 140. That zone is a wonderful place when you find it. Make the most of it. Because yeah. the last thing you want is somebody to 85. burst that bubble. It looks the size of a dustbin when you're absolutely on it. And when you're in that zone, tons become bad scores. Well, here's the thing about this performance from Jim on the treble 20. That's only his second 140. He's got three ton pluses and he's got four maximums. He's more likely to hit a maximum than a ton. Well, we did say coming into this week, his strike rate at 180 is 1.5 per game. So he's just, he's just catching up. <laughs> Not a bad time to catch up, considering he's got to win this game if he wants to be in the semi finals. Adam Mould is thinking 52. Why did you have to find it now? There was something I said a little bit earlier tonight, 96. which might Jimmy requires just 32. come true. Let's see if he hits this double 16 first. Doesn't find himself down here very often. Game shot on the but fourth that's a three-one lead. Jim McEwen. And what I said was, his ceiling of performance is better than most. Pitha, yeah. it's Adam to throw I, I, first. I've played this version of Jim McEwen. And as Adam Mould's feeling right now, it feels like he's pretty unplayable. Now, what does Mould have to do from here? Loads of that. Yeah, it's going to have to be incessant now. He might even need something in the region of seven or eight 140s from here. Because McEwen's not going to miss. Elite players find their best when they need it. McEwen has done it. 40. On a Saturday night here before. Well, he's got rid of the one. You've got to do it at some point. Just getting out of the way early. 78. Not a bad visit in the end. 
It's got a half a dart lead here. I'm a big fan of 19s on 283 because you get the 719s, which leaves 6 six nineteens for double 18. It's concentrating the target. Yeah, and even if you hit 5, it's 188 when you return and everything's at the at the treble 20. The most frequently aimed for target Falls on the board. Blowing a little hot and cold here in this leg is Chucky. Well, the situation is... 133. He's at the winning line, isn't he? You Sometimes you can try a little bit too hard to cross it. Yeah, you don't want to ask the line to come to you. You have to run 100. through it. As we require 129. You can get caught out. Just ask a certain Femke Ball from the Netherlands after the World 57. Athletics Championships. Jimmy but required 140. When she failed to get the medal she wanted. She had another race after and redeemed herself. Does McEwen. Redeem himself in this match, or does Mould forty-four find in the last hundred? So to seventy-two. Speak, a bit of a sprint. Yeah, Jim just can't find that two treble visit needed. So tops for Adam. Fifty-two. Well, Ninety-six has got a nice ring Jim to it. Jimmy requiring ninety-six. I think what McEwen wants here is a shot at tops, or two at double eighteen, of course. It's going to be two at double 18. And look at Mould. He can't watch. One left. Double nine. Game and he gets the double nine. And, the and Jim McEwen, you Jim can McEwen. see the relief. And the elation from Jim McEwen. An average of 100.82. Only our third average in excess of 100 this week. And it was in a match that he had to win and he's done just that well let's have a quick summary with henry up on the balcony fellas thank you very much i'll see you down on the stage at 10 o'clock so that victory for jim McEwen means that he is into the semi-finals he joins dan reed in the final four from group two as far as group one is concerned well we saw that come to a culmination quite early on tommy morris losing the opening two matches of that group thus being eliminated meaning that jim long and oscar lukasiak make their way into the semis lukasiak winning the group courtesy of a 4-1 victory against jim long in game five of our evening session so that means we're going to have a tantalizing look at the semi-finals in just a moment's time. We'll see you at the other side of 10 o'clock when we join our friends over at Sporty Stuff TV. This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
morning and welcome to the Motors Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where we have reached the semi-final stages here in week 10 of Series 5. And what a night of drama we have been treated to so far. Plenty of action in and around the wires this evening and there's been drama to boot. This is the best of the action from the pool stage matches as described by Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. <laughs> And he categorized it as good practice. This is a shot of double 16 for Tommy for an early break of throw. throw. Now, now, you will, you will see, see him throwing fast in the scoring phase. Game show on the and first you will see him pause Tommy Morris. For doubles. Group two for another Jim. Jim McEwen against Dan Reed. And then we will return to group one. Back to two, back to one. And then our final match will be Adam Moore on the second against Jim McEwen. Jim Long. Jim Long levels in 15 with a beautiful 112 out. Tommy Didn't recorded 150. Elite level of counting. Should have started on 19s, maybe. Absolutely. Well, that was almost well, a treble you, 15. You could go 19 and potentially then go ball yeah, or then go shot treble the 20. Play. That's Tommy our second Morris. ton plus out. <laughs> My poor counting will get picked apart. This is for the win. It would be the biggest finish of the entire week. Oh, Jim. Game oh, shot. And the match. To get Jim first Long. Two points in group one. And even Tommy Morris gives him a hug for that one. He deserved it. Or a Champions Week winner. Oh, it's going to be that's gonna weigh, the way this is going to go. How's this going to go? Already found a bullseye in this match. And Game he finds another the second one leg. to finish this second Jim leg. McEwen. And boy, did he need that. We saw a 1-6-4 from the other Jim to win the first match. 57 and tops would give Jim a two-leg cushion. Game shot on the fourth leg. McEwen. Jim McEwen. 1-1-6 one, one, for 3-1. 96 for the win. It is double top again. 56. And he bends the wire on his first match dart. Daniel requires 62. Reed has had four darts at a double in this game. That treble nine means that he can only get one potentially to save the match. It will be a double 16. Game shot on the fifth leg. Dan Reed. Daniel requires 64. He's cost himself a, a double. Reed gets two. Game shot. You can and see the what match. it means to him. Dan Reed. Dan the man has won his first game in the group. A Tommy requires 108. Legs. I don't see anybody dominating this game. Uh, certainly not at this stage. Well, that's, that's in. Double 18 needed. Game shot on the third leg. But I wouldn't mind Tommy seeing Morris. that 54 again because that was some sort of deflection. It's for Morris on Tommy 18s again. Yeah, and he's two from two on the finishing pool. One from five for Oscar. Step back. Have a little exhalation there. And hit. 97. Not quite. Oscar, you required 20. Well, that would have put him... One step closer and one leg closer to qualifying because that would have been a break of throw. As it is, Game shot on the fourth leg. he's got to go Oscar again. Doesn't look like it's going to be third Oscar time lucky for Tommy. Four. He'll have to go through another campaign at some point in the future to try and get that elusive weekly title. Game shot and the match. Means that the Oscar Swede Lucasio. will be in the semi-finals, and he could pay the penalty again. Double 12. For 2 0. Game shot on the Things second are Very interesting. Adam, in two Adam, you require 68. Adam looked a bit tense when he retrieved his darts after the last visit. Can he make himself feel better? Double 16. He's chuntering to himself. Game shot on the four play. And he keeps chuntering Adam with a three-one lead. And Daniel requires one hundred and five. Costs him a finish. If he was to come back, of course, because Dan's got tops to win. 
Game shots and the match. He doesn't just win the match. He wins the group. Jim needs double ten. It's a cagey affair. And now it's double five. Ten. This game should be over now. No last start long this time. Oscar require 40. Is it going to be tops? Game it is tops. And the match. And against Oscar the Lukasiak. this week, it is Sweden's Oscar Lukasiak who wins group one. Yeah, she didn't sound like she sung. If you know what I mean. Yeah, the difference in normal speak to singing voice. I've never seen anything like one it. But the one he's have shown up. Well, the Jew. He's due a bucket full. I think sometimes when you have travelled an incredibly long way to come here on a Saturday night Jimmy and for your qualifying 81. campaign, you just look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm not going home without more money than I've got. How Aim about that the first from Jim McEwen. Jim McEwen? Statement made. I think what McEwen wants here is a shot at tops. Or two at double 18, of course. It's going to be two at double 18. And look at Mould. He can't watch. One left. Double nine. And Game he gets the double nine. And, the and Jim McEwen, you Jim can McEwen. see the relief. And the elation. Well, you heard their voices. Now you can see their faces, Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson alongside me here on the stage. And it's fair to say, as far as this evening is concerned, the two favourites have got through, but two of the other, maybe the outsiders, have also made their way in. Yeah, the two players that myself and Paul were a little uncertain about produced the goods tonight and played and played very well and deservedly take their places in, in the semi-final. But the, the two we expected the most from... Jim Long was a little bit iffy in that game that was a dead rubber, so he gets the, the benefit of the doubt, but Jim McEwen, absolutely outstanding. If we give Jim Long a free pass for that second game, can we look at that first game and look at the ending of that game, that 1-6-4 in particular, as signs of that brilliance? Yeah, definitely. I think when you look at how he finished the game and what we've seen from Jim this week, it hasn't been perfect. It's just been good enough. And he still has a chance of uh, having another day where it's one defeat and everything else has gone his way. So if he is going to have a bad game, that's the game to have it in. But the way he finished game one, that will give him a lot of confidence. And also watching Jim McEwen as well, seeing the way that he played when under pressure and when he had to play, he did. I think Jim knows now, in the case of Long that is, that he has to do the same from now on. And as far as Jim McEwen is concerned, had to play that final game against Adam Mould as a winner-takes-all qualify, and he puts in a ton topper. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. It started with that beautiful 11 darter, and uh, he, found, he found the 180s. We, we said he's, he's one of the bigger 180 hitters in the field, and they've just not been there. But when he really had to do it, he found it under extreme pressure, and that performance is right up there with anything we've seen. He didn't panic, lost the opening game that he was expected to win, a big favourite to win, then came back and put in that kind of performance. And that will... We, we've seen it last week with Jarrod Cole losing those four mm -hmm. matches. He came into Saturday night and he just couldn't shake them off. My worry for Jim Long is, on the back of that performance, will he drag that in to the semi-final? Time will tell. As far as Oscar Lukasiak is concerned, is he going to do something that I'm going to call the Swedish ting? Maybe go under the radar a little bit Monday to Friday, but then on Saturday, pounce. Did you just say Swedish ting? Yes, I did, well, yes. Well, ting strums just over my shoulders. <laughs> I can't say anything bad about, about Victor, but what we're seeing from Sweden in this series is extraordinary because we've got two people through to Champions Week and now we've got another one in the semi-finals. And if we get a third person, then we've got to start talking about the next phase of Swedish darts because it's, it's starting to happen. Oscar Lukasiak has not played his best game tonight, but has he played his best game all week? He even admitted to you earlier tonight that he's not, but he's still through and he's still won his group. Didn't have you down as a bit of a road man, Henry, <laughs> to be honest.
Well, I'm gonna Spending get too much time around them footballers, I think. I think I'll be getting my Stone Island jacket on <laughs> and I'll be going somewhere away next week. Right, <laughs> let's look at the results from tonight's session so far. I'm going to quickly move on from that because eliminated from proceedings were Tommy Morris and Adam Mole. And as far as Adam's night is concerned, it kind of rested on that game against Dan Reed. Adam in a 3-1 lead in that particular match. Dan then came back to win 4-3 and it meant that winner-takes-all game against Jim, which was unsuccessful. In. Yeah, unsuccessful, but ultimately when you do get two cracks of the whip and you can't take either of them you do have to look yourself in the mirror and say look tonight just didn't go my way he's going to play a lot of darts between now and the end of the year and potentially go to a Q school campaign in January he's still the ADC number one today wasn't his day but I'm sure he'll have plenty of more as far as Tommy Morris is concerned I think he's very young in his development and I think there's still a lot for him to learn, but his record in making Saturdays is excellent. He's just got to take that next step. I'm not going to put any additional pressure on those lads because they failed tonight, but you learn more from failure than you do from success. Yeah, and, and Paul picked up on something that was quite apt. He is very bouncy. There's lots of energy. Maybe that's something that just needs to, to be reined in a little bit because uh, being emotionally invested is you know, equally... Uh, is emotionally exhausting and sometimes when you're that hyped and that amped it can leave you with very little in the tank how does he do that is that sports psychologist maybe something yeah, along well lines? Just, just listen he's brand new to the game he's, he's in dart in terms he's been sort of playing five minutes it's something that he would just learn over time and and, and develop and evolve Right, let's have a look then at the tables following the conclusion of those matches and see the four players that made it through to the semi-finals. As you can see, Oscar Lukasiak and Jim Long making their way through Group 1. Dan Reed and Jim McCure making their way through Group 2. Now, the winners of the respective groups will have advantage of throwing their semi-finals and they'll take on the runners-up of the other groups. So that means Oscar Lukasiak is going to take on Jim McEwen in a few moments' time, whilst Dan Reed is going to have the advantage of throw against Jim Long. Now, because Jim's just come off the hockey, he played that last game against Adam, and because he put in that ton topping average, is he going to feel really warm for this first game? Yeah, I think he'd be ready. I think he's been through so many different scenarios here at the Super Series and in our previous studio in Southampton that nothing really phases him. Whether you want to put him straight into bat or whether you want to put him in in game six, he's not bothered. He just looks at each game as another challenge. But I do see him as a very potent threat now because of what he's done. I don't think that is going to be a solo style performance where he's not going to do anything else. He's reached his peak. I'm not sure he has because if you look at the game he's just played, he was actually well above 100 average at a point of four legs into it. So there's more in the tank, trust me. Yeah, he would have liked to have stayed, stayed on here, I should mm -hmm. imagine, and, and just carried on playing because when you're playing like that, you just want to keep going. And just quickly, your thoughts on the second semi-final? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's hard to look past Jim Long, but it's very unpredictable to and very unpredictable and Dan Reed very much like Jim will be on a, a crest of wave of confidence so it is semi-final time here at the live lounge in Portsmouth our 10th spot through to Champions Week is about to become available here in front of a crowd on the south coast and if you want to be a part of the experience here at the Super Series have a look at this Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate darts experience. Meet the dart stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. And so our first semi-final sees McEwen and Lys Lukasiak make it to the stage with an opportunity in the final awaiting for one. Well, let's get into the commentary box and to describe all the action for you for our first semi-final this evening. It's a very good evening once again to Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Thank you very much, Henry. Yep, semi-final number one is about to get underway. And what well, it would take a very brave man to even pick a winner at this stage but it is going to be 
Oscar with the advantage of throw against Jim. And then it's going to be Dan Reed against Jim Long in our second semi final. Players just having their final practice starts. First leg, it's it Oscar to throw first. As I said, game on. Oscar with the honour. That's got a nice ring to it, Miss, <laughs> isn't it? Oscar with the honour. I suppose the honour could be the Oscar at the end of the night. And if he was to win tonight and put his way into Champions Week. 100. My word, Sweden. What a series. Yeah, well, it's... I think I think that the, the Euro Tour and the expansion of that and the interest and the, the opportunities the, the ADC has now created, especially in that part of the world, I think it's given the, the players a lift and maybe a bit more ambition. Yeah, I think the Nordic and Baltic Tour deserves a bit of a, a nod as well because you're CC. seeing players from Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Now, Iceland as well. How, how, sorry, Paul, how long has that particular PDC element of it been, has it been going? Yeah, it's been over 10 years now. Yeah, so we may be just starting to see the fruition of, of that hard work. Yeah, I remember in the early days of the... Scandinavian Darts Corporation, the SDC, it turned into PDC Nordic 100. And you had players like Jorka Komula, former World Masters finalist. Smiler. And Jarno Harvestor of Finland as well, coming through. And we all thought, this is great. But then things seemed to stall just a little bit. But over the last year or so, we're starting to see more Scandinavian talent 59. starting to make their presence felt. We've seen Danish players here in Portsmouth, the likes of Benjamin Drews and more Swedish players. And I expect to see more countries from Scandinavia represented. But I think the effect of what Sweden are doing here in, here in this series is really important. Yeah, well, it'll give it another shot in the arm. You know, they, they do have their limited opportunities to make the worlds and 100. other potential events. But it is it's quite limited. So this is another avenue out for them that will be inspiring. Speaking of Oscar's night, he's averaging 80.6. And he won the group. Yeah, and it's just timing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Especially when he's only 29% in his doubles, but he took full advantage of the fact that Tommy Morris missed his chances. He missed seven darts at double... 50. Against Oscar. Oscar required And then Jim Long missed 12. He's just been there to mop it up. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with that. We've seen many a winner do that over the years. And he's doing it again. Yeah, AC5. Very off Jim McEwen. I mean, he's literally just come off stage. No, no more than, what, 20 minutes ago, Paul. Averaging over 100. And hitting them in off the lampshades. Oh, here we go. One hundred and eighty. <laughs> Took him Oscar six minutes to get a maximum. Fashionably late, Nicole. But does he lose the leg on the double that he hit to get through? Twenty seven. Well, that one eighty changes things potentially. Jimmy, it was Oscar's 26. leg, but ultimately. Mr. McEwen needs double 13 to pinch it. That's the only scenario where you can actually do something to affect your opponent legally. There's no defence in darts. And that no score. is a wide. He was definitely perturbed by Oscar that first flight. Nine. He was trying to go over the top of it and that shoulder got involved and he tugged it. We see a lot of players now and there's, there is a big boisterous crack. Oh. This, he's got to go the chisel. He's got to go five double one. <laughs> Five. Told you, Oscar. You've got a marker in there already. Five double one was the shot there. 
yeah, you'll see them when there, there's a big crowd. They'll they'll do that 180 just just to create that volume of noise that will hopefully spill over into your opponent's visit. That's James a good hit. On the first leg. And maybe Jim one McEwen. of the best 23 darters he's ever had. The Kasiak is the one Second leg. It's who Jim was pinched to throw this first. time. Game yeah. on. And you would think playing at that kind of level to reach the semi-final at some point you're going to get found out. And we can talk about 16. what's happened tonight, what's happened over the course of the week, but we can also talk about what's happened over the course of the series. Now that we are live with our friends at Sporty Stuff TV, I'm sure a lot of you have tuned in over the course of this series 96. in the last nine weeks. We've got two more qualifying weeks coming up after this. But if you're looking at the names who are already into Champions Week, based on what I've seen this week, I don't see the champion coming from this group 61. at the minute. But there's still time to prove me wrong. I still think Week 2's champion, Daryl Pilgrim, is the man to beat. Yeah, he lost out today on the 19. European Tour in Germany. There's Adam Mould. Nice to see him stay on and support the players remaining. And, well, he was a little hard done by today. He could have got more out of his match. But, yeah, I'm I'm with you, Nico. I think he's I think he's ready to win Champions League. Yeah, you know. Closely followed by Cohen and Whitehead, I might add, because... Yeah, well, they're, they're the, the two standout, you would think. Absolutely. And then you've got Matt Clark, who has been to the championship game before. So... At the minute, as we are in our semi-finals here, you've got players in Champions Week this time who have won it, as in Whitehead. People who have been to the Championship game in Matt Clark. And people who have been to a Champions Week before, the likes of Pilgrim. 140! But there's a lot of greenhorns in there. Now, McEwen has won... A week before. He is... 97. The only one left here tonight who has done it on a Saturday night in Portsmouth previously. I don't think he sees that as pressure. I think, I think that's an advantage for him. Yeah, very little. Right, or GM. 57. Vastly Oscar experienced. Oscar requires 78. He just can't seem to... Find anywhere near the form he showed us in the match to qualify for this semi final. Did this game come too soon, Paul? Jim, you require 100. I suppose it's easy for us to say yes. But darts can be weird. You can be flying with a 100 plus average, and then the next game you play within a matter of 10, 15, possibly 20 minutes. You well, feel like a completely different player. Well, sometimes you fall into that trap of 74. trying to force Oscar yourself into replicating a a performance that he produced. Double 10 doesn't come to the aid of Oscar this time. He's got a marker for fives. 15. This is turning out to be a real nightmare Jim, you for Sweden 50. in this first semi-final. Nine darts at a double without success. And McEwen is going to be in very familiar territory on tops. Double Dane 10 the second leg. It was Jim nowhere McEwen. near the middle. But does he, look, does he look like he cares? It's Third definitely leg, it's to throw gone first. his way in this game very on. attritional game. And that's a word I always use when a game is not very good. Because, let's face it, let's be clear. This is a nervy game because we have two people on the stage who desperately want to make the final. 60. And I get the feeling they are trying too hard. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Jim's just pushing too hard to match the performance... He produced, like I said, prior to starting these semis. Well, that's more like it. 
But does that 2 0 lead give Jim the license to relax? Yeah, it gives him a, well, it gives him the opportunity to play with a bit of freedom, doesn't it? And these two have not met each other all week. One hundred swam in very different pools because Oscar Lukasiak is the only player here tonight who has been involved in two groups. He played in Group A with five other players, and he played. In fact, they did meet, didn't they? It was in Group B. I do beg your pardon. Yes, and it was. It was. I'll tell you now because I just, I wrote it down before that last match. It was on Thursday, Thursday 4-0 for Jim, and on Friday, 4-2 for Oscar. So there you go. 58. Not only did I forget that they played the last couple of nights. Well, you were, you were on session 7. 725. Yes. I'm only joking. After a week, my brain goes to 55. mush. 55. Well, you know how these players feel. You've been in semi-finals and finals. And you've been in more than one Saturday night. And they were back-to-back. -back. 100. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I come up with the genius idea of playing in week 12. <laughs> Which isn't too far away. Week 12 is always dramatic, isn't it? Everybody... Talks about week 12 as we get really close to it. Because if you win week 12, you've got to stick around for another 100. week. And your own Mirk did it in the previous series. And he had a fabulous time of it. I think if you treat it with 93. not too much expectation, Jimmy you can... 130. I sense everybody was under it where I sort of played the... I'm just a commentator, lads. You can't lose to me. I might have to play that card sometime. It works. That's a bad dot from Jim. He was hopeful of a 60 to leave the bullseye for a 3 0 lead. 85. And Oscar now. Oscar, you require He's gone 90. for some very strange routes for shots this week. But here, you've got to play the probabilities. Single 20 for Bull. And if he's going to the right-hand side, don't be greedy. Well, he's gotten away with it. It is the Bull. 65. Can't galvanize his chances with a hot spot. Jimmy required 45. It's going to be five for tops for Jim to be edging closer to the final. Another final. He's yeah, getting very close leg. to Jim doubling McEwen. his money here on Saturday night. Because if he does make the final, it will be at least £2,500. But I guarantee you Fourth one thing, Jim to throw first. these players are not thinking Game about on. the money right now. They're thinking about getting to the end of the rainbow. Yeah, this is a, a double your money match, isn't it, of course? And then it's a, a, a double your money match again. One hundred and twenty-one. That Lukasiak this week has been susceptible, pretty much the whole week. He has been fighting tooth and nail <coughs> for twenty-five matches that he's played. One hundred. Yeah, he's had some great results. He's had some four nils. But has he lit the stage up? He would admit that he hasn't. And at the minute. It is McEwen who is maybe trying to solve the Oscar puzzle. Yeah, from being 2-0 up, we're seeing a, a much better version of Jim McEwen. And I think in finals, you just let it all out, don't you, in a final? Yep, you do. You leave nothing in the practice room. Well, if we 60. may look at the statistics from the night just one more time, they gave you a bit of an insight because... I told, I told you about what Oscar did. 80.6 as an average for the two games. Jim McEwen, 94.18. There were 14 points between them and 21% in the doubles. 100 and don't need me to tell you about the 180s. Well, I will anyway. It's three for Jim. And it's eight for the night. 
That's as pretty much as much as everybody else has hit together combined. He's doubled 96. what he did over the course Jimmy of eight 100. games over the last couple of days. The 180s have finally reared their head. And he's on the verge of the final as he's got two darts at tops. Well, I was going to say the irony, Paul, because his campaign tonight effectively started with 11 darter in the final match of the group stages. And he very nearly closed this one out with another 11. Now, Scotland do not have any representation in Champions Week. At the minute. Required 20. That might be changing, but first he must make the final. Game and he does shot. make the final. And the match, Jim McEwen. Very little resistance coming back from Lukasiak, who has probably just run out of steam. But the Swedes should be very proud of his debut week here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. He fails to get to the final, but Jim McEwen will be very happy that he got through that one. He will have a maximum break now ahead of the second semi-final, which will see Dan Reed up against Jim Long to see who plays Chucky in the Week 10 finale.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where we are ready for our second semi-final at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth as Dan Reed takes on Jim Long. The victor awaiting them in the final is Jim McEwen after he won the first semi-final by four legs nil. So let's get it on in the company of Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Thank you, Henry. 27-year-old semi-finalist here in week 10 and the winner of Group 2 tonight up against the person who finished second in Group 1. The favourite with many people coming into tonight because of what he did in Group A and what he did last Sunday as well, winning a Seniors first Tour leg. event. First leg, to throw and first. Game on. Is he the favourite in this game, even though he didn't win his group, Chris Mason? Yes, I would. That's, yeah, just, just about, I suppose, make him favourite, just on reputation. 125. But it's whether he can shake off that really really poor performance against oscar last time out where he averaged 78 97 and only one from 13. that would be my only concern he was the two to one favorite to win tonight jim was three to one adam was five to one tommy was 11 to two but the big outsider dan at six to one he's the biggest price that 60. still remains after oscar was put out in the previous game. I've got another concern as well. And it's something that we didn't address when we were on the stage with Henry. Just 140. You think about how he had a bit of jet lag last weekend. It didn't stop him from winning, admittedly. And it didn't stop him from winning Group A, but he did struggle to sleep earlier in the week. He said he slept better 140. over the course of the week when he's had time off. But we talk about dart lag, don't we? He's gone from playing in the morning to playing late. Now, now I wonder, I wonder, Nico, if his sleep pattern now has been between half ten 68. and eleven o'clock, which is fairly normal time to go to bed. Absolutely, it's a challenge for people coming here from a long distance. Ask Haruki Muramatsu, ask Makuru Suzuki, and Raymond Smith and Ben Robin. And One hundred. Jacob Taylor, who has. Well, done the best of all the Canadians here. Alex Bellman just decided to go back on his own time, didn't he? Worked out all right for him. Yeah, didn't in do the, too badly. In the 100. main. 100. Daniel requires 76. Well, he's got a smile on his face already. Does he know he's going to hit this? Oh, he's missed a single. And again. 35. Got to Jimmy stay focused, Dan. Yeah, and he wasn't... That smile doesn't suggest he was absolutely switched on. He yeah, will be switched on now, because that's a beauty Jim from Jim Long. Long. Well, we were concerned. We had no need to be. Second leg, it's Jim to throw first. I think the king Game on. of the facial expression this week has been Dan Reed. As soon as that 48 was hit by Jim Long, he was out of here. That was an exit stage right moment. It's almost like the stage hook had just got him around the throat. 123. And that's the kind of thing that, metaphorically speaking, Jim wants to do to Dan because this looks more encouraging than that previous match he had against Oscar Lukasiak. But I've got to say it. I think he's experienced enough. He's been around the block a few times, especially in round-robin format as well, where you find that urgency when you need to win. He didn't need to win that game against Lukasiak. Hey, he needs 100. to win this one. Yeah, and in comparison, Jim McEwen had to win and did it in style. 58. Dan, at some points this week, has found himself playing well for a couple of games and then all of a sudden... Things tail off 44. very quickly. Yeah, it's sustaining it, isn't it? That's That's been the problem for him. I get the feeling that these darts are being thrust through the air 40. with more air than penetration than earlier in the night. They're being feathered. Yeah, a little bit loopy. Sometimes loop is a good thing, especially if you're a spin bowler. But with the way he throws the darts, it's got to be very direct. 45. There's been quite a lot of backing off tonight from Dan as well. He's been troubled by 
micro disturbances in the hall. And and that, that tells me he's not absolutely focused. When we finished our piece at the top of the show, when we joined our friends at Sporty, Jim McEwen walked past me and literally looked straight through Easy me. one. Me too. And that tells me he's switched on. And we are super respectful to the players who are just about to grace this stage. We don't bother them. We know what it's like 100. doing that walk. Jim, you require We just want to get up there and start. And at the minute, Jim is just cruising. Yeah, Dan Reed is... 53. The spikes have got stuck in the blocks. This is better. 100. Again, there's that. Jim, you require too much 55. air. Indeed. He's lost the force of the throw to try and nestle the darts together. Double 10 for Jim for 2-0. 35. He might come back. Dan, you but this has got to be positive. 87. He's got to think positive before he executes positively. A good visit starts before you even tour the hockey. That's a great dart. Couldn't ask for a better guide. Yeah, should be able to use that. 69. He was just walking slightly, wasn't he, on the Jimmy the required last dart. 20. He is not happy. I am sure on the second line. Jim 10 Long. seconds in the brain of Jim Long right now and another 10 seconds in Dan's brain because I'd be Third fascinated to see what's going first. on at the minute. Game on. Well, 18 darts is 83.50 in terms of an average. Which is six visit legs. And at the moment, this is more than enough for this man, Jim Long. One hundred well, let's just dispense with the pleasantries of the start of this match and just give you an idea of what you may have to do to get through a group. 78. Jim Long averaged 81.84 to get through his group with 26% on doubles. That was very similar to what we saw from Oscar Lukasiak in his group. Lukasiak is gone. 80. What we associate with Jim is something around about seven or eight more than that. As far as Dan Reed is concerned, he was 86.43 with 31% on the doubles coming into the semi-finals. He'd have been pleased with that because it was above what he was doing all week, average-wise, by a good point and a half. 100. But look at what Jim's doing Dan now. required 103. Doing what Jim did halfway through that game against Oscar. Finding 83. another gear. Can he find Jimmy require 140 one out for three zip? He found 164 to win a match earlier on. And he started on the 57, but he doesn't get it this time. 63. Dan, you require Dan 20. A bucket full of credit because this is a much better leg. Game shown the third dollar, leg. In fact. Dan Reed gets him right back in it. And it's Dan Reed who's averaging 88.41 now. That number has been following <laughs> us around for the last <laughs> six days. Seven if you're Jim Long. 180. Wow. This one is warming up nicely, Nico. Yeah, he's not noted for massive 180 hitting, Jim Long. I think it's because of his style and the thickness of those punts. They take up a lot of sizal when you get 65. three in there. In fact, his likelihood of 180s in Group A, it was less than one a match. 100. It was 140 shooting and his clinical nature on the outer ring, that's why he won that group. And that's why he's 2-1 up here. Yeah, his, I think he mentioned it. 55. With an interview with Henry a little earlier that he said with one dart in hand, he was frighteningly efficient. 100. And he's not the kind of player that 
will give you any ammunition either. He plays an almost silent match on the stage. Make a good 45. Poker player. Jimmy Rakai, 121. I'll fold, thank you. <laughs> I'll wait till the next hand. <coughs> Jim will wait till the next visit. 81. Because he sets it up perfectly. Looking to get his own 13 daughter. Yep, leaving his preferred tops. 21. Dan just Jimmy losing Rakai, the rhythm 40. there. Almost flinging them away in disgust. In the knowledge that he should lose this fourth leg. No score. Not really close. Didn't scare it. Was he trying to be a little bit too safe? Yeah, I think so. I think Dan here as well has almost forgotten the textbook because on 315, you want to get 145 plus. 43. Starting on Jimmy the ball Rakai there is 40. a very prudent plan. Or even if you get the 260s, then go to the ball with the third dart. Just needs to bump off dart one. Nice score. Yeah, that's what he tried to do, but it went by the side. I think the next dart of tops has got to be try and hit it with one. Don't, yeah. don't be defensive on it. No, be more aggressive. And he has to be now Jimmy because Dan has left the finish. A big one. That's seven missed north of tops. Game shot on the fourth but play. it's not going to be eight. Jim Long. No, the moment Dan gets to a finish, Jim Long finds the double. Fifth leg, it's Dan to throw you never first. never see a Canadian panic, do you? You think about Canadian superstars from yesteryear and currently. Oh, you look at, just don't panic. Look at John Park. Rocks up on debut at the embassy. Takes away the money. 93. And in true Canadian style, he can walk down the street and nobody would recognise him. And even if they did, they'd just say, Hey, John. That'd be it. 140. He is super laid back as well, isn't he, JP? Isn't he just? 60. There's Adam Mould on the right-hand side. Dimitri Zhukov on the left. And Victor Tingstrom was hiding behind Adam Mould right there. 58. Nice guy. Terrible window. Great door. <laughs> oh, Adam. I think that might stick. That's going to be his new nickname, you know. Adam Terrible Window. 26. Mould. It's up to social media to make it stick. Yeah, nobody likes a mouldy window. It'd be different. I don't think there'd be anybody else in World Darts called Terrible 89. Window. 89. What can Dan Reed do from here? He's got to find three straight legs. He's got to find a blitz. But you just don't feel it coming. 100. The darts are going in the board with weakness. Yeah, I wonder if it's... Wonder, oh, I mean, he's 27. It's not going to be a fatigue issue. Maybe it's just a little bit of a timing issue. 100. And there are things that can be done about that. He said that he's got a few nooks and crannies to... Try and massage before he gets to the 125. The kind of he wants to be. Jimmy requires 74. But he could start with trying to be a bit more positive. Double 16 to make it to the final. Game and it shot. will be and the match. Jim versus Jim, Jim in week 10. Not to be for Dan Reed, who is just from up the road. But Jim has come a very long way, and it may be very fruitful for him. He wins by four legs to one, and look what he averages. It's a very Jim Long game. It's 88.79 with very effective doubling. He will be in the final tonight against Jim McEwen. So who's going to win it? Will it be Jim?
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where it is time for the final here at the Live Lounge in Porto. And it's going to see a battle of the gyms as McEwen takes on long. And previewing all of it, Chris Mason, Paul Nicholson, alongside me here on stage. Well, we said from the onset this could potentially be the final, and it ended up being the case. Yeah, it looked, it looked the most likely outcome for tonight, and uh, that's exactly how it's played out. And uh, credit to both players. They've come through a few edgy moments, but... I think they both deserve their place in the final. Let's dissect both semi-finals. Begin with the first one, Paul, with Jim, uh, Jim McEwen and Oscar Lukasiak. Now, Jim had to ride a few ways in the opening leg, but then after that, he kind of took control of proceedings. Yeah, what we've seen already uh, are two players who have won their semi-finals against the darts. And I think when you've got that, you can almost look at the first leg and say, it's a bit of a freebie for me. If I can break immediately, that's great. But if I don't, there's no reason to panic. But I think Oscar, when he looks at these performances tonight, especially the semi-final, he will say to himself, the doubles cost him early. Had he hit doubles early, it might have been a very different game. But as soon as Jim McEwen was allowed to get that 2-0 lead, he just played with the freedom that Chris was talking about in the commentary box. And after that, it was only going to be one winner. And as far as the second semi-final was concerned with Jim Long and Dan Reed, Jim kind of, it was a typical Jim Long performance, wasn't it? Just proficient and steady throughout. Yeah, he just, he just put his foot down, didn't he? And it's certain spells in the match and he was feeding off that negativity from Dan Reed and that's what experienced players do and that's why you've got to be a little bit more stoic sometimes. We refer to poker all the time because that poker face is the way to play the game because any little advantage or any little inkling of negativity you can get out of your opponent, you can use that against them. And he's just in, a, he's just in that place at the moment, isn't he, Dan yeah. Reid? He's from the same county as Luke Humphreys, who recently won the Grand Prix, of course, a matter of six days ago. And when Humphreys won that tournament, beating Gerwin Price in the final, he talked about how he had mastered the art of not feeding his opponent any negativity or minimal negativity at that. That is a lesson that Dan is going to have to learn from someone who used to live very, very close to him. Because the moment you start feeding your opponent that, and Chris will say from his generation, as soon as they saw that, they've got you. Yeah, they, they, you, just, you just feed on any kind of negativity like that. And that's why Luke knew he had to introduce that stoic nature into his game. Because a couple of years ago, you'd see him, his head would drop, he'd shake his head, anything like that. A really experienced player will go, oof, I've got you. So the winner of tonight's final is going to join an illustrious cast of players at Champions Week. This is the weekly winner's bracket so far. It began with two real experienced campaigners here at the Super Series in Matt Clark and Dale Pilgrim. Dale Pilgrim who played some superb stuff on the European tour this weekend. We've got former champion Conan Whitehead in the equation. But I know the one bit you're loving about this, Paul, is the two Swedes in Champions Week. Yeah, it's only going to be two, but I think Sweden still need a lot of congratulations in getting multiple players there. We do have plenty from England, and the favourites are going to be from England because they haven't got to travel as far, and they're arguably in better form. I don't think there's any arguably about it when it comes to Whitehead and with Pilgrim. But what we have in our final tonight is a guarantee that another nation is going to be represented because it's going to be Canada or Scotland. So they're going to have to add their name to the rostrum. There's only one country can do it this week. So let's see who it is. Well, let's see what's going to happen next week then before we preview tonight's final because this is the players list for next week. All Cosmopolitan mix Group A gets underway 9.30 on Monday morning. We're going to see a player who actually made it through to Champions Week last time in, in Reese Robinson. And we know that when he's at his best, he could produce some great stuff. Yeah, he's a, he's a wonderful player, isn't he? He's, um, he, he has, he's another one. He, he's quite unique, has his own way about going things. He had that incredible ball 18 ball. He's... Uh, and he's fearless, and he's he, he's not scared to take anybody on. And yeah, I, I expect him to go go well in that. As I expect the same from David Davis, who's got a bit of experience here now and has produced some massive averages of late. So he'll come here with a lot of confidence. As will Scott Taylor. It's going to be good to see Andy Hamilton back here. I'm really looking forward to seeing Jarno Bottenberg. <laughs> it's almost. A bit of a shame that I'm not going to be in the commentary booth because the amount of cake jokes I would have made all week that would have rivaled the Great British Bake Off. It's Battenberg, mate. That's the joke. <laughs> yeah, you would have risen to that particular occasion, wouldn't you? <laughs> hey, there's a poor Hollywood joke for you. Right, let's preview tonight's final then. It is the Battle of the Gyms. It's McEwen against Long. What wins it and why do you feel, chaps? I think 
I, I'm going for McEwen. I think he will have the knowledge of having that game in the locker from tonight, and that should hold him in good stead. But for me, it will be about the early exchanges. I think if Jim gets the, the first leg uh, in the bank, I think he could kick on. I think if he's got to chase Jim Long, I think Jim Long's a great front runner as well. Yeah, I've got McEwen as well because I think if uh, if big scoring comes into it, then McEwen's got it in the locker, whereas Jim hasn't really got as many 180s in the locker as his namesake. So I would just go for McEwen, but it's it's very tight. But if it gets scrappy, I, I, I would side with Long. I think he wins those scrappy games a little bit better than, than uh, McEwen. Right, so I've got every base covered. Right, we, you see, <laughs> splinters? No, 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 never with mates. Right, we'll let you two get down to the commentary box to describe all the action. It is the final. It's long against McEwen. It's a battle of the gyms to see who is going to win week 10. Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dart stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. For all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Well, on gym day, it is four legs that matters because that's what's going to get them past the victory post here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And putting the reps in in the commentary box over the last couple of weeks has been Paul Nicholson and another man who's never afraid to get his reps in. It's Chris Mason. Yeah, you're not wrong, Henry. We both like the gym. But which gym is it going to be? This has got gym written all over it. It's a bit of a nightmare for our referee in this contest because they have to full name them for every shot. But... This is a great final for week 10. McEwen, 56-year-old from Scotland, up against the Canadian, who is 55 years old. Was it me and Mace earlier in the week that said this is a young man's game? <laughs> I'm not so sure we were right. But we will have either a Canadian or a Scots player in Champions Week for the first time in Series 5. First leg, it's Jim McEwen to throw first. But who game on. will it be? Two of the best players this week competing in the final. Paul? Can't argue that point at all. And two of the most consistent as well. You think about Long. One he might be up against it. One, because he doesn't have the darts. He's lost the bullseye in the practice room. And when McEwen starts with a max, that's ominous. Yeah, absolutely. Once he gets his eye in, as he has done tonight in the maxes. 57. We've seen why we expected so many from him in his qualifying campaign. He must have been saving them all, saving them all for tonight. What's he hit now tonight? 11 or something. 85. An awful lot. And I'm just doing the nightly averages and percentages. We both went for Jim McEwen. At that point, we did not know who'd won the bullseye. I nope. think if somebody had told us, 100. we would have said McEwen even more. But look at this. 28% on doubles tonight for Long. 42% for McEwen. Average for the night for McEwen, 89.16. Exactly five points 90. ahead of Jim Long. That's the tail of the tape for the night. Yeah, and that is a, that's a bit of a, not necessarily the void in the three dart average. 60. Jim Jimmy Rakai, 146. Is going to be key. Well, Jim Long is 10% down tonight on what he's done all week long. And McEwen is relentless at the start of this first leg. 63. I always say if you don't have the darts in the first leg, see it as a freebie. See it as a range finder, yep. but you have got zero 
And I mean zero wiggle room after that. No. Bill Taylor famously, of course, used to give the... He used to win the Fee ball and then give the throw away. Jim, just to you make you feel 83. even better. And then attack uh, attack your opening leg with the darts. Yeah, but I bet he wouldn't do it in this format. No, not a best of seven. Nobody would. And in our records, from all of the weeks we've played in Portsmouth and Southampton, anybody who's won a bullseye has never given it away. 43. He's left tops after 15 in the opening leg, and there will be... There will be some nerves. They will be feeling it. This is a two and a half thousand pound. Ninety-five. Best of seven. Jim, you require the winner 40. takes away five thousand in the place in Champions Week. The runner-up takes away two thousand five hundred. Yeah, it's about four thousand Canadian. Oh, we talked about the doubling. Oh, he Sean eventually the first gets there. Jim McEwen. He last starts long who usually last starts everybody else. Second leg, it's Jim Long to throw first. Game there on. There you go. Full name. It's not just Jim to throw first. It has to be Jim Long or Jim McEwen. Yep. Seventy seven. Fascinating week. And you've just seen the players for week 11. There's some heavy hitters in there like Andy Hamilton and mm. Scott Taylor. Absolutely. James Richardson as well. And I believe they're all in the same group, aren't they? Yeah. 100. Yeah, that's, a, that's a bit of a stinker to be in. Well, we don't put bad groups together here in Portsmouth, that's for sure. 100. McEwen needs to go full out attack now that he's held in that first leg. Yeah, he wants to try and keep Jim Long under pressure. And there's another. This was the worry. I did see on the stage with yourself and Henry that if the 180s show up for McEwen, then Jim Long has got a problem. Yeah, well, we know from a big sample 100. of Jim Long that he is not. A 180 merchant like McEwen. If you think about the likelihood that we spoke about in the semi-finals, Long hits less than one per game here at the Super Series, whereas in this final, McEwen is hitting one every leg. <laughs> yeah, and, and over a big sample of Super Series history, it's one and a half per game, so he's oh, twice as likely. Savannah Max. You got the winner of Group A here from earlier 60. in the week. And the winner of Group B. So from that standpoint, they look really strong. But And they were both absolutely dominant, weren't they, in they their were. respective groups? Yeah, they won by four points in their respective groups. But the weird side of the coin says these are the two runners-up in the groups tonight. 100. Jim, you require 164. Got this earlier to win a match. He would have loved another one. But McEwen on 78, that's dangerous territory for Jim 49. Long. Because Jim, requires 78. he's either going to wind up on double 12 or double 20, which is exactly what he wants. Oh, Maybe he's not. Yeah, that's a, a really pulled art. What was he going for? Well, he stayed for the 54 for double 10. I think it's because double ten's been really good to him tonight. Yeah, good call. Fifty eight. Not on that occasion. Jim, you require one hundred and fifty. Way back. On one one five. Could even see a long way back. <laughs> it's not gonna be the last long long joke. But this is no joke. Well, I did have a long good 59. Friday. Fifty nine. Jim, you required twenty. He didn't play on Friday. Correct. Oh, no score. that has been a tale of this week as well. Yeah. How many times have we seen people Jimmy go Goldilocks on us? I've seen that more this week than ever before here at the Super Series, especially the double 15 going for double 10. Definitely. And if you think about some of his double 10s tonight, they have been very low. This has been a lifeline for Jim Long. 16. Cannot take advantage of the mistake from 
McEwen. Jim, you require 20. If you're going to hit this double 10, Jim, go higher. Go a lot higher for double five. Not that high. No, and he, he loves tops, so players that love tops usually pretty good on double five. 15. But this is a final, and it is for five grand. Jim, you require 40. <clears throat> He's been given not one, but two lifelines. Game shot on the second go. leg. It's Jim one all. It shouldn't be, but now it's best of five. Yeah, it should be 2-0 to McEwen. Third leg, it's Jim McEwen to throw first. Game on. Well, whenever I work with you, Chris, here at the Super Series, I hear the word gym a lot. We talk a lot <laughs> about exercise. We talk about going to the gym after a Super Series day or before. 81. We don't usually go to gym at 11.10 on a Saturday night. No. Only gym I'd normally be having at this time of night is a gym beam. 59. You know what? I think there was something in the water today because we were talking about that Madonna song and it was called Jimmy Jimmy. Well, that's what the final is. <laughs> if a final had a soundtrack, it would be Jimmy Jimmy by Madonna. 140. It's a great show. When they play the highlights of this final, that's the track they should use. <laughs> I don't even think it's a single. I think it's an album track. 41. Yeah, I'd certainly never heard it before. The only thing that McEwen wants to hear is the call of 180 to leave 100. And he probably will. 180! One every leg. He's very dependable. And yet again, Jim McEwen is 44. hitting more 180s than Tim. Jim, retire 100. He did this earlier. Now, this is the spot where you just get three single 20s and don't faff around. That's Absolutely it. the right thing to do. Yeah. 45. <laughs> well, if you look up commentator's curse in the bibliography, you'll see that shot right there and my voice. Yep. No damage done with Jim back on. 45. Jim, you require well, 312. 55. To go within two, he wants tops. It's ever so slightly smaller now. He's made it smaller by pushing the wire. 35. And he's just one from 10 on the doubles. But he's getting away with it. 100. This is the kind of final, when I look at the statistics... 100. I genuinely Jimmy wonder... Jimmy 20. How... Is Jim Long not already 3 0 down? Oh, no not score. again! Do you mm. want to say what you said in the previous <laughs> leg again? Because it's happened again. Yeah, remarkable. But now, Jim Long is going to be on the 100. finish. 100! Whatever Jim you do, Mr. 20. McEwen, don't do that again. This feels like the previous leg all over again. Fifteen. And you can sense the tension. And if Jim Long goes 2-1 up in this 112. game with his numbers, he will wonder how. Yeah. So will we. So will everybody watching. Fifty. Jim, you require five. This is not an easy checkout. This final is not about quality. It's about trudging through the mud. Who can trudge the best? Game shot on the third trudges to two Jim one up. I mean, the averages are being absolutely crushed by the... Fourth leg, it's Jim Long to throw first. Poor finishing Game from on. Jim and a little scratch at the head, but you're two one up and now two away. Do you remember when Luke Littler averaged 117 in a final? 
Currently, Jim McEwen is 2-1 up, and he's 46 points behind that average. But in terms of scoring, it's three legs played, three 180s, a 140, two scores between 43. a ton and 139. But the element, which is really poor, two from 16, it was something that we you picked up on. How good his finishing has been coming into this final. Absolutely. 60. I think two things are contributing towards this final. One, McEwen is getting off the tee well by hitting some big drives, i.e. the 180s. But as soon as he gets close to the green, he just can't find the hole. He's, he's needing <laughs> about four or five points. Yeah, he's lipping out. And at the minute, Jim Long, scoring-wise, he's going out of bounds. Eighty-one. They're both players on the seniors tour. And it would be very easy for me to say that at this late hour, maybe it's difficult 48. to play it when you're a bit more seasoned, but I'm sure they've prepared as best they can for this eventuality. Because based on their form this week, we had them as the two favourites. Yep. They have made the final. That's no accident. But if you want my insight into why this is happening, why they're playing so poorly in the final, I'd only be guessing. I see. Is it the occasion? And you know what it's like when it starts off scrappy. It'll, it'll tend to... To stay scrappy. 139. But maybe it's about to catch fire. Has Jim Long weathered the storm of his own mediocrity? Or is he about to find 60. Jim, something like a second 40. or third wind? Game That's way the better. Play. A 16 dot leg. That almost feels like a 10 or 11 daughter in this final, with all due respect, of course, because they like both understand the that they're not playing well. But now we are Game into on. a best of one World Masters set format. Yeah, now just a best of three. And we know that anything can happen Six in those scenarios. Two. We went all the way in a Group C scenario this week. It went to the very last leg. Went to the very last dart. 100. Between Tommy and Rene, wasn't it? And Rene had three darts at a double to put Cam Crabtree through. Three times we have gone the distance in finals in this series. Matt Clark beat Wayne Jones by four legs to three. 140. Jones really had a great chance of nicking that final. But Matt Clark stole it away in leg seven. Anton Ersland had to survive. 121. Week winning darts from Ryan Harrington. And last week, Sebastian Biowetsky beat Andy Bolton by the odd leg. Do we go to the last leg again? Or do we have only our second 4-2 scoreline in series five? That was Chris Quantock against Bradley Ruse 25. in week eight. And he was very much a surprise winner. 60. That afternoon, he actually played in that belt match and he was beaten, wasn't he? He was by Tom Sykes, who played fabulously for that ADC belt. But then Chris Quantock had the last laugh. <laughs> he was... The man with the big check at the end of the night. And he might even get a bigger check come Champions Week from October 94. 30th. Yeah, October the 4th, the final. If you want to join us, be quick. The tickets are selling fast. Well, you don't have to pay for the tickets, it's just a booking fee. Two pound booking fee. You can come and join us any Saturday, of course. Head over to dartshop.tv. We'd love to have you here.
Is Jim McEwen letting this slip or is he going to make an impact? One hundred and thirty eight. Just for a minute, Nicole. Jim, you require oh, no. eighty. Yeah, I was with you. That wouldn't have been the right time to do that. But this is the right time to do this. Seventy-five. Wow, long way off. I can't believe Jim, he's had two darts 44. to be in the lead, considering how he's played in this game. More town for McEwen. Four tops. Game shot on the fifth leg. Three two to Jim, Jim McEwen. McEwen then. Chucky is one leg away from Champions Week. Yeah, and you can tell this is Sixth tough leg. It's going Jim Long to throw first. Game on. Jim Long looks the fresher of the two. And the least frustrated, yeah, it's Jim Long that's behind. 60. You think there's pressure on people coming from Canada, the United States, to maybe cash more money here to cover more expenses? Well, it's all about justifying the decision, isn't it? And then, of course, the, the real pressure 60. is when you come back for Champions Week. Right now, that's an if for both gyms. How key is it for McEwen won the ball? Well, it, it, it takes McEwen 11 hours to get here. That'd be, well, somewhere around the kind of same time it'd take Jim Long from Canada. Yeah, if you're flying from <laughs> Toronto, for example, to get to Heathrow or Gatwick, that's 85. an eight to nine hour flight. The prevailing winds actually carry you quicker coming from Canada. So he probably should get here in about eight hours. But the amount of waiting time at the airport, how long it takes him to get to Toronto, and then the time it takes him to get to Portsmouth. It's still a long way. Yeah, you get caught in the jet stream, don't you, coming back? Well, for us coming back. For him going back, it'll be longer. Currently, Long has got his hand in his pocket and he's digging deep. 95. Jim, you require 167. I think that McEwen might be feeling... Very frustrated at the minute because he probably feels I should have already put him away. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. 97. And it's looking likely to go to a deciding leg. Great fun for us. Not for them. 140. He hasn't hit. Jim, you require in an eternity. It's been a couple of legs. To take us all the way. He needs double top. 50. This is a good number for Jim McEwen. Jim, he hit one of these on Thursday. He'd love another. Yeah, he just wants a go at the ball. Or, if he goes for the treble, which he does, double 14. Game. It's Shots. Jim's week once again. And the match. He's and the, the king of the Super gyms. Series, Weeks and Champions, and he's be in Champions Week Jim as McEwen. A Scott because he is the first Scott into Champions Week in Series 5. He saved his best shot for last, and he was the strongest on the night. Those statistics tell you a bit of a story. They weren't that good early on, but they were a little bit better later on, weren't they, Miss? Yeah, they sure were, and the reason his average is down at 78.3 is because of four from 18 on the doubles, just 22%. And ultimately, it matters not because there aren't any averages written on that trophy or on that £5,000 check. Well, let's get a bit of reaction as we go over and join Henry. Chris, thank you very much. Jim McEwen, many, many congratulations through to another Champions Week. Just sum up how you feel right now. Oh, elated, absolutely elated. Um, I, I didn't give myself a chance in the final because I know how good Jim is. And I, I've came here in the back of, the back of some mediocre performances in the, in the last couple of weeks. But yeah, absolutely delighted. Man. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that the assessment of your week has been at times we've seen some really good stuff from you, but you're still maybe searching for that, that level we know you definitely got in the locker? Yeah, um, 
Thursday, Friday, I didn't play particularly well, I don't think. I, I thought I played really well tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And to be honest, I thought I deserved this tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's say you deserved it tonight and back at Champions Week, back successful here at the Super Seed, on the back of what you did at, at York. In terms of the results you're getting at the moment, Jim, it's very, very good. Not bad for an old man, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just try my best, Henry, um, whether it's the seniors or this. I mean, you know, you, you know yourself, all the young boys that come in here, they're so good. Um, but you can't beat an old head. Hey, it's not bad advert for the seniors, was it, you and Jim in that final? Yeah, yeah, Jim's a lovely guy. That's, that's really the first time I've met Jim. My, um, I know last week at the seniors, I, I never saw a lot of them. My wife spoke to him a, a few times at the bar. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she said he's a lovely guy. Um, but first time I've met him really tonight, and such a lovely guy. Yeah. So second time into Champions Week for yourself, Jim. I suppose you're going to be starting to enjoy this venue a little bit more now. Yeah, I'm getting used to it now, Henry. <laughs> Still prefer Southampton. Let's <laughs> <laughs> say so back through to Champions Week, and I suppose this is part of a, a big end to 2023 for yourself. So your Champions Week here, and I suppose f for yourself as well on the senior circuit, trying to get a qualification spot for the Circus Tavern. Yeah, well, in the seniors part of it, there's only one open event. It's, there's still some ranking points to, uh, to get. Um, and it's always good to come here and, and win, and hopefully I can come back the next time. Well, what we're definitely going to do is we're going to see you in a couple of weeks, Jim. Many, many congratulations. I'm going to take that microphone off. I'm going to let you have your moment now. I'll let you collect the cup. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner for the week, week 10, is Jim McEwen. Well, excellent for Jim as he gets the photograph from his friends and that. He's just taken up the adulation. We'll let Jim go. Jim, thank you very much. We'll let you take the trophy with you. Many, many congratulations. Thank you so much. We're going to bring on the asset, Paul Nicholson. Paul. Well, <laughs> it's not bad for someone who prefers Southampton, is it? Two wins here. Yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, really tough for Jim because uh, he worked very, very hard. I know that final wasn't a classic, but... Sometimes you've got to win finals like that to get the title and to have the opportunity going forward. And he did a great job. Mace and I talked about that final shot as well. It was his biggest finish on Thursday. And sometimes you need something to cling to, a shot that you've already done. And this game is about replication. So the fact that he was able to do that with the final shot, bravo. He's made a final at the World Seniors in York, a major televised event. He's won here this week. And he's saying he still thinks there's possibly more levels to go. If he finds that at Champions Week, we know what he's done here before on many occasions. The champion of champions, the last event in Southampton. He could be a real dangerous contender. Yeah, I don't think many people like playing Jim because of his uh, slightly more deliberate pace. But they don't like playing him because he's good. And there is another level of that. There is no question because... When you look at what he's done here previously, his ceiling of performance, some of the dominance he's shown in a Group A campaign as well, being one of the co-holders of the points record, he fits into this uh, scenario very easily. And I think the only thing he hasn't really done is dominate a Group C, but the only reason he hasn't done that is because he's never had to go through Group C, and he might not need that in Champions Week. He may not need to. Well, let's just finish up by summarising the week as a whole and just your overall thoughts and reflections. I think it's been fairly attritional at times. We've seen only three ton plus averages, but we've seen real nail biters too. I think Group C is something I will remember for a very long time. When you look at Tommy Morris, you look at Cam Crabtree, and you look at Adam Mould having three games left and one game against other opponents, and then one person slips up and the other two win. It goes to the very last leg. They're the kind of groups that you remember, and I think that's what I'll take forward. Well, Mr Nicholson, your work here is done. Oh, it's been a long couple of weeks. Thank you so much for being a part of the team. We'll see you Champions Week, isn't it, next for you? I'll be here as well. But I won't be on here. I'll be on this. Exactly, where you want to be. Right, let's see. We'll see you on Monday morning, 9.30 a.m. for the beginning of week 11, where Reese Robinson is going to be the star attraction. He's lifted one of them, and he wants to lift another one of them. But as far as week 10 is concerned, well, Chucky chucked the decisive darts. He is into Champions Week.